Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fessler, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy Friday. It's that day of the week after we took the night off as we come together to, as a community to talk about those things that the government doesn't want to. To talk about those things, believe it or not, from science fiction. And yes, to talk about those things, well, you know, from the X-Files, what things are we talking about? We're talking about the things that you can go out and see over your house in the evening, but you just need to go out and look up. What are we talking about, folks? We're talking about good old-fashioned UFOs, and we still call them that here on Disclosure Tonight for a dang good reason. Why? Because there's a word for it in every single language around the world throughout perpetuity. Who knew? So as the government continues their 75-year year war, scratch that 90-year war, against the extraterrestrial presence. How do we know? Oh, just take a look. It's a military operation. It's a DOD operation. It's the Air Force. It's the Navy. And they're doing what they can do to find these crash vehicles to go ahead and take the occupants and do who knows what to them to make their biological experiments and to use their weapons, their technology for weapons of mass destruction. That's why we come together many nights a week Heard the latest news, the latest information, and tonight is like no other. Mike called earlier tonight and said, Rick's coming on. He's got some breaking news, some great things. He never thought what would happen. You know why? Because we're tired of hearing those things from those bozos in the White House and those idiots in the DOD. And that's why we come together as a community with myself, Thomas Fessler, our friends in the call-in chat, and everybody else in the regular viewers for yet another episode of disclosure tonight good evening everybody how you doing we got to fix that <laughs> i don't like that do you yeah no there's just your sound effects there's a way you can go into your sound channels to tell to go ahead and get rid of background noise when you kick that up it takes the sound and just quiets it down and brings it back up we'll get oh. you there That's well, okay. welcome to google you my gotta friends. Resend, resend that sound file to me because i did not extract it Oh, you didn't get all this. You, you got rid of the zip? Yeah. Well, oh. no. But it, it said it, it was expired. Oh, you never downloaded it. That's the key. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to go ahead and send it again. We'll figure it out. On that note, let's go ahead and welcome everybody and see who we have out in the chat. Holy cow. I think the chat's all set up, but I'm going to take an easy way out on this one to go ahead and see who are the participants in today's show so far. Let's do it. In reverse order, alphabetically, that is. On that note, where is the band? Let's get the drums going. Ah, oh, here we go. Kick it up a little bit. There we go. All right, let's see who we have out there right now, shall we? All right, reverse order. Paul DeMond is here along with the Susan Ford, followed by Shelly Montgomery. How's it going, Shelly? Long time no see. Great to see you back in the chat again. Hopefully, Life is treating you well and bright and everything. Uh, Rick Thody is out there. Can't wait to talk about the things you got to say tonight, Rick. Revival is around. Rachel Smith, PC, also known as Paul, is here. Along with Mr. Catfish2100. Yerp, yerp, yerp. Good to see you, Catfish2100. He's one of our longest time subscribers. A chronic person. <laughs> Thank you for being He's been around here almost as long as I have. How about that? Thanks for coming on, Mr. Catfish2100. Yerp, yerp, yerp. Who else is out there? Mick, Mick is out there. In addition, we have the Mr. Goodlooking, Marcus Mandel. Good to see you, Marcus. Liliana June is here, along with Larry Gerns, also in the chat, and he's in the back. Can't wait to see what Larry's hair has to bring us today. KK Nichols is around. Uh, Kelly Bro with her piercing blue eyes. Good to see you, Kelly. Kathy's here. Welcome, Kathy, along with Just Phil, the... John Music, the John Music is in the audience. And if you want to get his autograph and an overlay map of all the locations people go missing and how it equates to 
the cave systems in the United States. Make sure to catch him on your way out of the studio. He'll be on the back right side of the studio. Catch John on the back right side of the studio. Who else is there? Let's take a look. It's Jan in the middle again. Good to see you, Jan. James Friday the 13th is here. Jay Rhino is around. Thanks for seeing a Jay Rhino as I get past some sushi for dinner. I just need some utensils and, huh? The snack. Yeah, we got Fred Flintstone ribs on the smoker for a while today. Can't wait to see where it's going to go. Jay Rhino is here. Good to see you, Jay Rhino. Hollywood is in the chat, and he's in the back as well. Firefly is here, along with Evan B. Eli, Eli McGinnis has made it in again. Good to see you, Eli. Get to the bar and pour and um, Guinness for everybody. Would you look at that? El Secretor. El Secreto, also known as Renee, is here. The Daryl Zernick, Mr. Livelong and Prosper. Cosmic Q Toast made it in along with Kat. Brian Pemble made it. Good to see you, my friend. Blith Haynes. You're new, Blith. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Aubrey McLeod is here along with A-Rod. He's in the chat and he's in the back. Uh, Arnie S. April R. Coleman is here along with Ant-Man. Amiga Rules. The 11th Messenger. And... Joanne is also here. Who did I miss? I don't know. Let's just go ahead to the end of it and take a look and see who the heck is out there. Well, I know who's missing. It's Mike, Mike, Mike. Hey, Mike, where the heck are you, my friend? It'd be a while. Yes, Niles is... Uh, Rick Doty is in the chat. Let's see. Fred Herbert is here as well. El Cazador de, de la Ver, Verdad. Ciao, my friend. Who else? The 11th Messenger is around. Who else is out there? Brian Morgan, Niles Guy, of course, Kelly Barout. Kelly, where's she at? Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Need to get that with her piercing blue eyes. Haven't done that. It's been too long, my friends. Who else is out there? Let's see. And Joanne, I think we welcomed you. I think that's about it. Amiga Rules made it in. How about that? That's, there's some Tim here. Which Tim could it be? I don't know. Could it be the one, the only... Tim Frick, that's who it is. It's not that, Tim. That's a good thing. Revival is here as well. Good to see you, my friend. Anyone else we missed? A Phil. Where is the Phil? Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Shermanator Osborne made it in. Good to see you. Who else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Going once. Blith Haynes. Going twice. Revival. On that note, Justin Scott made it in. Just under the curtain. All right, let's go ahead and shut that down. I think we've got the enough things poured for all of us to make us all feeling good for the rest of the night on that note. Let's go ahead and shut off the drums and let's strike up the band. Holy shit! Yeah. It's that time of that again to see who we have in the back panel, at least to start off right now. Let's figure it out. Who do we have there? Let's take a look and see. Would you? Oh, someone wants to join the call. Oh, it's Bruce Bruce. There we go. All right, let's see where that's at in the back right now. All right, he's a man whose hair, not the man, the hair, Larry Gern's hair, who has warrants out for him, out for his hair in Florida and Texas. A man who's <laughs> better than his hair. Let's get him in here. Larry Gern, good to see you, my friend. I missed on that one today. Good to see you, my friend. <laughs> it's good to see you, Thomas. And uh, let me just fix my hair here. There you okay. go. There you go. Nice, soft, and silky. Thanks to Pantene. The... Thanks to Pantene. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd, like to say, I'd just like to say uh, goodbye to everyone who's leaving Twitter again. They're all leaving again? <laughs> people people like to slam the door and walk away like they, like they have another life to go to. Yeah. And, and they... A couple of days later, they're back. <laughs> So. We've actually had that a bunch of times with some people on the panel, too. <laughs> I'm yeah, never coming I mean, back, you son of a bitch. Oh, hello. The doorbell goes off. <laughs> That's okay. Tempers flare. Passion flares is what's about. Talking about something flaring. Holy cow. Fred Herbert, yeah. there you go. Super chat coming in. Starting off the super chats for the night. There we go. I want to thank Fred Herbert for that wonderful super chat. Holy cow, forty nine ninety nine. Yes, Fred Herbert. It's uh, Doty Friday. At least I think it is, because he's in the back, not in the chat yet. But we'll see where we go. We'll have some things to talk about in the meantime. 
Mike, what are you doing to me? You're setting us up here. <laughs> i got to have a fun with it. Absolutely. It should be a good one, I tell you. A bunch of fun things to talk about. All right, let's go ahead and on that note, thanks, Fred Herbert, for going ahead and starting off the Super Chats tonight. Remember, every dollar that comes into our Super Chats here at Disclosure tonight, as it's so small, let's fix this. There we go. Every Super Chat that comes in Disclosure tonight goes back into our production fund. We are so thankful and humbled for everyone's love and support of the channel. And yes, that Paul DeMond asks, how many likes? Well, clearly not enough. Do us a favor, folks. If you're having a good time and you plan on having a good time, plan on hanging out, do, do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up because you know what? That's what helps a YouTube algorithm to go ahead and share this with more people. That's one of the only things they look at. So do us a favor. Give us a thumbs up. And if you're not having a good time, well, then change it. Give us a thumbs down. We'll take one or the other. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, do ahead, hit that button, please, for us, because it's the only way we're going to hit 7,000 subs. Appreciate that so much. Let's turn off that music and get back to welcoming in the back. Besides Larry Gernt. Thanks for hanging out here, Larry. We've got A-Rod. Welcome, A-Rod. How you doing today? Doing very well, Thomas. You get a hatless A-Rod tonight. Bearing it all for you, baby. There we go. D we've got disclosure from A-Rod. There you go. <laughs> Good to see you, Mike. It's friend. slow. It's slow, but it's forthcoming. Oh, absolutely. And you've got the lights dimmed in the back of your uh, room, too, and you're just being lit up by the PC screen, it looks like. Interesting. Yeah, I got, I got that 49-inch Samsung. 5120 by 1440 yeah it's oh. it's freaking it's huge yeah there you go i only have a 3840 by 2160 another 3840 by 2160 another 1920 by 1080 it, it all kind of works i tell you wow hmm? hmm i'm not gonna eat on well i'll have the sushi we'll deal with that as we go along oh would you look at that also coming in the back right now we've got rick Doty. let's go ahead and get through the rest of the warm welcome shall we also in the back we've got bruce bruce welcome bruce Thank you. Excited to be here. Oh, absolutely. As much as I am. Uh, Casey, welcome, Casey. Good to see Mr. AM Hoops. You cover hey, basketball brother. a lot, don't you? Say that again? You're a basketball yeah. expert, aren't you? Uh, I guess you could call me that, sure. Yeah. Nice. Wonderful to have a, uh, a sports fan here. Uh, Hollywood is also here. Welcome, Hollywood. How you doing? Doing good, y'all. Good long and prosper. Live long and prosper. Absolutely, my friend. Also in the back, we've got Michael Suckloff. Welcome, Michael. How you doing today? I'm doing great, Thomas. Can't wait for the show to rock and roll. Oh, absolutely. Also in the back, we've got Syrup. Welcome, Syrup. How you doing? I'm doing great, Thomas. I look forward uh, to tonight's show. Oh, same here. Absolutely. Also, we've got Sawan Patel. How you doing, Sawan? speechless for the first time i know <laughs> we yeah, caught him squeaky toys he was dog wakes up <laughs> it's loud sorry everybody that was as loud for you as it was for me <laughs> on that note leaving best for last as always we want to wreck yeah. welcome no. not you rick Doty. how you doing rick You're doing great Thomas, great. How's everyone doing tonight? Good, Larry. Good to see you, Larry, good. and good, everyone great. else. Yeah, likewise. Um, yeah, I got some updates on uh, a number of things, so I'll, we'll talk about them, uh, I guess, in a little bit. Yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. Before we get things started off, we got another person jumping in the back right now, Brent W. Good to see you, Brent. Let's go ahead, and I do have a news, a news update coming to us from the local golden corral interesting news to combat oh. lou buffet and what he had what he's been doing against sean cahill and others let's go ahead and jump into this breaking news broadcast that we had recorded to us and sent to us earlier yesterday i had a hold on this one let's go ahead and play this little clip shall we let's do it all right let's jump across to here and let's play this clip this is George Nappy reporting to you live from the Golden Corral, where diners have reported a 500-pound animal beast sweating and nasty, eating inside the buffet, clearing end-to-end -end buffet, scaring diners away, only answering to the name Lou, Lou Buffet. So here we stand, here at the Golden Corral. I'll come back to you more for WT, WTF News. I'm George Nappy. 
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it TFU at the end? WTF News. <laughs> oh, TF News. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's like WTF, like oh, what the Farg, or it could be yeah. what Thomas Fessler. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yes, that looks like Patrick. It could be, but we will not go ahead and guarantee that until Patrick comes on and admits it himself. But yes, I love these kind of things, and we need to just get more humor in a lot of this stuff because we're going through so much stuff, and that's why we like to take yeah. disclosure and being serious about not being so serious. And uh, there's a bunch of nasty stuff said again. So this came in unexpectedly, and I love it. Absolutely. Yes, just, uh oh oh, no, no, no. Disclosure is going great. Disclose what Cupcake's up to. Hey, Larry, how's it going with you right now? I need to go find some cleanup stuff. Oh, oh. sure. <laughs> Let me just get things started with Rick. Yes, please I'm anxious. do. I hear what's happening. So, Rick, um, what's the news, man? What you got? Well, um, this week, uh, Lou's group... Um, Chris and, and, and his group contacted our group, um, spent a couple hours on the phone uh, chatting back and forth. Uh, they, they want um, to associate with our group. As in, uh, they have an agenda. As in Lou Elizondo's group. Yes, in Lou Elizondo's group. Yeah. Chris Mullins' group. Uh, they're they're not as, uh, as as big as we thought, but anyways, uh, they contacted our group. Uh, spent a long time discussing their agenda for disclosure. Uh, we countered with our agenda for disclosure. Uh, they gave us a lot of background information about their contacts and their whistleblowers within uh, the the house side. Uh, they're more aligned to the house side, and we're more aligned to the Senate side. And um, what what's in store, what they think is in store for the next hearing. Um, and but at the end, we decided uh, at least our group uh, listened to them and, and decided to uh, stay neutral. Uh, but what we did find out, there were a number of other groups involved in this lobbying effort with Congress. There's a group of scientists that call themselves the Triple E, and I'm not sure what that means. I don't know what the abbreviation is. There's also a military media group. Uh, the military media group is made up of, um, uh, dr uh, I guess, editors from the different military uh, newspapers. And now, uh, for the people who don't know, there's a uh, there's a Military Times, there's Air Force Times, there's a Navy Times, there's a uh, 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 I, I believe a Marine Corps times, or maybe that's associated with Navy. A Rod can 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 uh, set me straight uh, straight on that. But uh, these, uh, these editors are are from these military uh, newspapers are are also lobbying, and we just found that out uh, Wednesday. Uh, of course, I'm not sure what their agenda is, but we're going to reach out to them to see if we can find out what their agenda is. We also our group's going to reach out to these scientists. And to determine, uh, we know something about these scientists, uh, or at least members of our group does, uh, as far as what they want. And they want a scientific investigation and a scientific approach to disclosure. Not quite sure what that means, but... Oh, uh, that means they want everything peer-reviewed and figured out, and we're not going to bring anything out until we can go ahead and get there. So, uh... Yeah, you got that right. That that's that's true, Thomas. I'm sure they want everything uh, uh, neatly uh, uh, evaluated, analyzed before uh, it's released. But um, we we did have we did our group did make contact with uh, Senator uh, Gillibrand. Mm -hmm. We we had uh, one of our members of our group made, had a nice chat with her. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure how long it lasted. And she assured uh, us that she was all for disclosure and that she, that when she made this statement in, in front of a news conference, uh, she might have been misinterpreted and what 
uh, what she believed in and what she didn't. And so I think she uh, she satisfied us uh, in a roundabout way. I think she said, uh, listen, I'm I'm up for reelection. I have to be careful of what I say. I'm talking to my constituents, but I believe in disclosure. I believe in what the Senate is doing. Uh, she believes Grush uh, and she believes oh. the others that, that testify and that uh, she's going to be on board with with disclosure. So I think we're Rick, that, we're content that, with, with, with that. That is effing great news, really. Yeah, at least it sounds like she remember Grush's name this time. I think Thomas and other people's beef with her, Rick, was outside of all that was the ardent support of Sean Kirkpatrick and his office. Right. We, we, we spoke a lot. Uh, I, when I say we, I'm talking about our group, uh, spoke a lot with Lou and, and Chris's group about uh, Sean Kirkpatrick and uh, they don't necessarily align them, themselves with him either. Uh, he's he's just a spokesman, and I don't think they agree. I mean, think they agree with us that uh, Sean doesn't uh, hasn't been fully briefed, although he claims he he was, but he he hasn't been fully briefed into the program, so he might not know a lot. And we also spoke in great lengths about Sean Cahill and what his angle is on this. Um, so uh, and, and, and nothing that came out that was negative uh, about him. Um, uh, Senator Schumer is on board with the uh, hearings coming in September, Rick, although Rick, we, we didn't talk to him. But uh, we, we, uh, the other uh, uh, people that we spoke with on the Senate side assured us that uh, Chuck Schumer was on board with it. Rick, what did you mean by Sean Cahill's angle? What did what did you mean by that? Um, he's he's said a lot in in uh, before, and he said a lot in the past about uh, disclosure and about what uh, how disclosure should be. But I don't think oh. he's uh, I don't think many people are listening to him. I mean, uh, you know, he had uh, uh, he had a good service record and so forth, but I'm not sure what. Uh, what what group he's aligned to and, and, yeah. and basically i'm saying that's what i'm saying i i don't know which group he's uh he's certainly not within our group yeah and i'm not that's sure cool. what group he's he's aligned he with. may be in lou's group i'm not quite sure i know lou and sean have had a great uh collaboration and a great uh great uh, if you want to call it um working relationship especially uh back in the days of skyfort uh for that matter i know it was about a, a little more than a year ago uh, before everything fell apart in last year's attempt to bring disclosure forward because the government didn't want things to move forward, was when you were at a point when he was said the conversation was going to be shifting from talking about the craft, talking about what's in the craft. And we, it seems like we stalled at that point. I know that's one thing he's been kind of pushing for. Yeah, that's true. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, another thing that we've, uh, we uncovered is, uh, and this is, uh, our group has uncovered and I can't say where it's coming from because, uh, it, it's coming from within the government, but, um, they, the DOD IG, uh, you know, they produced an, un, uh, an unclassified, uh, document uh, in July. They, uh, there's also a classified document, the classified document is twice as long as the uh, class, uh, unclassified document. Anyways, but the DOD investigated a number of things that I don't think many people knew they were doing, but they went back historically, as far back mm -hmm. as they could go, historically. How far back and, did they um, get? Actually, uh, I think everybody's going to be surprised. Um, they went back all the way to... Uh, to biblical times, they went back to 812. Um, uh, and, the, uh, and there was an incident uh, reported by the Archbishop of Lyon in France about um, strange beings walking around uh, the castle. And 
they came in from a star. Uh, and, and of course, you got to understand that this is taken out of biblical text and, and, and other papers uh, uh, back in those days because they certainly wouldn't know what a flying saucer was. So they, they're talking about a star that landed and these little, the little beings uh, walked around. And it was, this was an 812. But they, um, th this uh, uh, historical uh, revelation goes back there. And then uh, it goes through the 1600s, the 1700s, the 1800s, the 1900s, uh, and all sorts of different incidents, uh, some being astronomers, like in, for instance, in 1824, a Bavarian astronomer, uh, Franz von Grützen of Munich, writes the discovery of many uh, traces of lunar inhabitants. Um, he directed his telescope on the moon, and he saw people walking on the moon. And he also saw uh, stars coming and going from the moon. And this is in 1824. Right. Um which is, you know, quite, quite incredible. Uh, we, and we know a lot about uh, some of the other things that are uh, in pictures. Um, there's a, uh, a, a uh, text, I, I'm sorry, a sketch uh, on the side of a, uh, a, a hill in uh, southern France, uh, apparently made by, made thousands of years ago by uh, cave people or or uh, uh, our ancestors, which drew a a perfectly uh, sketched UFO, um, in in several different positions, apparently in the sky, and then one on the ground with these uh, uh, beings with big head uh, uh, headdresses or or helmets on, uh, and. You know, this is they're tracing this back to maybe uh, ten thousand years ago. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. and I'm sure, sure most of us have seen these things, but but uh, the DODIG went all the way back, and and I you know I don't have time to to tell you about every single thing yeah. that we yeah. we've learned about, but there's a number of things. Uh, there's a, a quite a sensational thing, I think, and this has been out. I think Linda Howell and some others have talked about the incident of of eight, uh, 1918 uh, in the uh, trenches during mm -hmm. World War I, uh, where the ball of light was traveling through these trenches. And um, it scared our soldiers, the, the American soldiers, the French soldiers, but it also scared the Germans because we had a signal corps unit that was tapping the, uh, the lines because they didn't have radios back then, but they had uh, 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 field phones. And they were tapping the lines and the Germans were, this was happening to the Germans in their trenches too. And finally, uh, a, a few days later at uh, midnight or, or, or sometime around in the dark, this thing, this ball of light landed in one of the trenches occupied American and French forces. And these little thing, these little uh, pictures came around it and uh, like almost like a television screen uh, as it was described. Uh, scaring the soldiers, not knowing what they were supposed to do. And then eventually the thing shot straight up in the air and, and disappeared. And that, I thought that was quite extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, it it but, almost sounds uh, like a, a form of trying to reach out a form of communication to a degree, Rick. Exactly. That's what, uh, that's what we figured that maybe they were trying to stop, stop what was going on. There's a, there's a fierce battle between uh, American, French forces and German forces. And back in those days, there is trench warfare. They built right. these trenches and they were fighting back and forth uh, across to, from each other. And I, it's a possibility, I think. So I, I really strongly think that this thing was an alien base and they were trying to stop it. They were they were showing themselves in hopes that maybe they would lay down their arms and, and stop this conflict. Yeah. Was there any mention, uh, uh, you know, back in the Mahabharata and different uh, texts from uh, India, they specifically talked about the gods battling in the sky, which could potentially explain some of the crash UFOs we have today, meaning that some of them, why are they crashing? Well, potentially, if they're going up against another non-human intelligence, it could cause another craft to come down. 
Exactly. There are there. There was mention about uh, ancient texts and uh, the the uh, translation of ancient texts that referred to uh, moon people or people from outside uh, uh, Earth. And you got to understand that these texts were written thousands of years ago. And the the, the, the the people who are writing these things. You don't know what UFOs are. Don't even know what a flying saucer right. is. Probably don't even know what an airplane is, and anything that's flying. So it was difficult to translate what they were meaning in, in some of these texts. And and I save the the, the best for last. Um, if you right now, if you anybody here uh, uh, sends a FOIA request about uh, different war time periods, uh, you can go back to uh, the, the. We still have files. Uh, the, uh, regarding the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, and certainly the Civil War. Uh, they found out that some of the documents pertaining to the Civil War, pertaining to World War I, and pertaining to World War II, are still classified in the what? National Archives. They're, they're st still yeah. classified? Uh, they're, oh. they're still classified. In fact, who did There's this a document? Well, I, I'll explain why they're do, they're classified. Um, there were incidents that happened right towards the end of the Civil War at Gettysburg that um, the a general was writing about. Um, the, the, of course, at Gettysburg, there was a war between the Union. You know, the Union soldiers are on one side, Confederates on the other side, but they were meeting in a house. Uh, uh, to try to negotiate different things, the Union and the Confederates. And there were people taking notes. Uh, and when they came out of this house, there was an incident on, on the side of the house where these long, tall beings, creatures, they were called, uh, were trying to communicate with these generals and, and other officers coming out. Um, they couldn't. Uh, they, they 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 don't know where they came from. They don't know who they were, but it scared them. It scared the, the Union and Confederate soldiers. And one of the soldiers wrote this in a diary, and that's the only thing that that they had. But uh, somehow, uh, when it, when we found out about it, or when they dug into the uh, um, archives and found this diary, they classified it because again, as showed that there was an ET presence during the Civil War. Wow. And of course, then you jump up to the to World War I, there's a, a number of documents that are still classified uh, and they all pertain to some unknown incidents that's happened that they couldn't explain. And that's why normally the military would, would classify something is let's classify it. And then, you know, when we figure out what this is all about, uh, we'll declassify it. The World right. War one document wasn't classified until 1953. Now, uh, I guess somebody dug it up and figured out, oh, my God, this is E.T. related. So uh, in right, this is towards the time of Blue Book was uh, in existence. And uh, we were still uh, chasing UFOs all over the skies in, in the 50s, 40s and 50s. And so uh, they, they classified it uh, and, and, and why it's still classified today. I, you know, I can't understand. I, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. And then also you jump up to the Vietnam War. Now, I know a lot of things in the, during the Vietnam War, uh, probably everyone here knows somebody, yeah. their father, uncle. My father's uh, fought in the in Vietnam yeah. War. Thomas, uh, uh, others probably have. Uh, and uh, I know some of the things that classified as uh, dealing with the collection of data by NAS, uh, NSA uh, on the enemy and how we did it and how the how we had spies within the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese right. and so forth and so on. But what? there's other other cases of orbs and other things that were seen on the battlefield or interfered with a battle that uh, pertained to uh, ETs. Right. Wasn't there a scenario, though, that happened in the Vietnam War that I kind of remember, Rick, to where there was one of these orbs that was seen by one of the battle cruisers that were out there? They went and shot uh, projectiles at the craft, and the next night, those projectiles were returned back to the, the ship yeah. that shot them? 
<laughs> yeah, it's that was like, uh, don't shoot at us. Was, we'll give it, it was, back to you. Yeah, it was a USS. Um, oh, what's the name of that? I, I just, I just had that. But yeah, it was a naval, a naval uh, uh, battleship uh, off the coast. That this, it was, it wasn't an orbit. It was an actual craft, a huge craft that came in. Uh, and I guess they were really close to the DMZ, like you know, almost in North Vietnamese territory. And uh, they fired uh, some uh, uh, five-inch guns or something like that. I read or something like that. Anyways, uh, but nothing ever happened. It was like the craft absorbed it. And and like you said, uh, the next night these things were dropped on the deck of the of the of the of the ship. Uh, like, oh, here's your toys back or whatever. You know, yeah. yeah. However they. Were. Yeah, that was that was in uh, in the late late sixties, uh, I think uh, yeah. it was it was documented. Yeah, I when I was a year story. old, <laughs> or a zero old. old. Yeah, I was a little older than that. <laughs> well, I was I was born in sixty eight, so that is the late sixties. So, ten years, uh, twelve, thirteen years older. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, wow, great times. I mean, it's great to hear they're bringing this out, but. The thing that just really gets to it, the question is, why are these documents and who lock these documents up that you still can't get access to it, Rick? Someone had to do it. I think somebody within the uh, uh, the control, the, the group that controlled, uh, you want to call them NJ-12 or whoever you want to call them, I think it was them, the, the, the group that controlled everything, uh, after Truman decided to, to put a hush hush in everything, and and then Eisenhower agreed with that, and the, the commission that uh, Truman uh, created, and uh, uh, I think Eisenhower tweet, tweeted it, uh, tweaked it a little bit, um, took control and decided we're not going to disclose this stuff, and and it's been that way ever since. And yeah. well. Okay, Rick. So go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rick. I was going to. I was just going to say, um, one of the things that um, Lou's group wants or thinks uh, wants to do is uh, they want to give the the government the benefit of the doubt, and um, and if, if they, they want other groups to to lighten up on the government because the government has all this stuff. And if we uh, continuously uh, um, downplay or, or criticize the U.S. government, uh, they might just turn everything off. Well, I'm certainly not for that. I'm, 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 I think the government needs to be criticized for keeping this a secret from 1947 or even before that, whenever they knew it, uh, up to up to right now, and then with the government's not telling us everything, nor will will they ever. We have to dig it out of them. And um, I understand <clears throat> that some things are uh, national security uh, interest, and we can't. But I think I, I think we should go out and 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 force the public to criticize the government to release this stuff as yeah. much as they can, rather Great. than. Uh, tread lightly on the uh, the government. Yeah. Yes. We waited six years already. How long do we have to wait? What do you, What does Lou mean that we have to be we we have to wait longer? We waited six years. I mean, since twenty seven. It's not it's ridiculous. Now, now, when I say Lou's group, I don't mean Lou himself. I, I I don't think our group ever talked to Lou. It was other people within his group. It wasn't it wasn't Lou. So, uh, but uh, I I agree that uh, uh, I think Chris Mullen is is probably the one that, I mean, he worked in the government for so long. Yeah. And I think he's probably yeah. has yeah. friends within the government and, and he wants to do things a different way. And, yeah. and there's always uh, two ways to do something. Yep. If, if I can, A-Rod, you've had your hand up for a while. Yeah. I wanted to ask Rick, um, in these different groups, <clears throat> does your group or any of these groups, do they have like a mission statement of sorts put out as far as what the objectives are and, is that just something that's kept internal that you guys agree on moving forward as a group, or is that something that you guys put out there where people can read it? Uh, we have a we have a mission uh, statement regarding the disclosure. Now, uh, let me go back. This isn't the only thing that we do. Our group is involved in a lot of other uh, activities 
Uh, we, uh, we make sure that every single uh, retired uh, intelligence officer who, who passes away gets a great burial and, 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 the, and the family is taken care of financially. <laughs> Uh, we also uh, support uh, legislation uh, pertaining to uh, uh, the U.S. intelligence, uh, nothing to do with the UFOs, but uh, other things. Uh, so we have other other uh, other things that we do, not just this. But this is this is a big one. This is a biggie. And yeah, we have a mission statement regarding the disclosure. Uh, and I'm I, you know, I, I don't think it uh, it's classified or we're not we can release it. It's. But it's really just basically that we are su we are supporting the whistleblowers, and we're supporting the disclosure of all information pertaining to the United States government's involvement with extraterrestrials, UFOs, UAPs uh, since 1947. Now that's that's where we start. Yeah. Now I understand people are saying, "Oh, 33," and but that's our mission statement regarding disclosure. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. There's probably some other adjectives and verbs in there, but uh, yeah. but that's that's our mission statement on disclosure. Those, now, far, I those think farting Lou, sons of a be beaches, too. they need to bring out the information and give it to us now. And if not, maybe we need to get people to go ahead and actually bring it forward and force disclosure. Because if you look at it this way, if Kennedy was taken out, if the first person who had it up, the CIA, was taken out because of the information they knew or potentially what they wanted to do to bring out disclosure. If we leave it to the government, if we leave it to the government, they're never going to want to have this stuff come out because it shows, yes, how much of a farting ice hole they really are and the cover up that goes, that's been going on and it is so old that makes us feel young. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think, uh, I think we should, Pressure our uh, representatives, uh, pressure uh, Congress, uh, uh, other, uh, I mean, uh, the executive branch uh, for disclosure. Uh, I mean, if we, I think we, we should take Larry up there and let Larry uh, <laughs> give him a piece of his mind, right, Larry? <laughs> well, Rick, I, now that you're talking to me, I'm going to jump the line and ask you a question. Now, Lou's group, um, they're concerned about us coming down on the government with negative you know attitudes and stuff like that uh that where are they supposedly where would the government supposedly get that kind of vibe i mean they don't listen to anything they're not on twitter i mean where the fuck are they going to get this from i think we're, i think what they're talking about okay <laughs> I they're, think they're, uh, they're they they listen to twitter they may not be tweeting on there but i'm sure you, you got to remember they read everything that could be, you know, the big ears. But anyway, um, I, I know in the hearing there was some, uh, you know, there was there, there was definitely some some dirt thrown at the government there, and and rightly so, um, by people with with a spine like Luna and Burchett, and uh, you know, calling it a cover up, and also um, saying that what, um, yeah, that. If they think they can push us around, we're, we're going to have, you know, we're, we're going to set set them straight about how things flow, how power flows in Washington. It's from the people. They're, they're the ones that govern the government, not the other way around. I mean, I didn't word that right, but you know what I mean. So I'm really yeah, curious no, I understand. Yeah. Why, Lou, why, why Lou would feel that way or his group would feel that way. I mean, what, what what's your feelings on that, Rick? I think it's uh, if you look at Chris Mellon, he worked uh, in the government for a number of years. He had a lot of friends with him in government. Um, he's a very articulate person, very, very nice person, very articulate person. Uh, and I think he uh, wants a gentler, kinder, gentler way to approach disclosure than other groups like our group. I mean, we we I mean, they want disclosure just as much as everybody does. But. Uh, I think they want to do it a different way. And I'm, I, I'm not criticizing. Uh, I mean, the, maybe their way might work. But uh, I think we've already given the government how many chances to come clean on this? I mean, and, and you know, what, what really upsets me 
and I and I don't want to get on about my bandwagon because I, I I I'll get upset. No, it's okay. This but, is the, you know, no, I, these <laughs> these are your person, not your working group. These are your personal thoughts. So let's have Rick Doty's rant. Take it. Okay, my rant is I spent a number of years working in counterintelligence for the United States government. And I did some things that the government directed me to do under, under in projects, different projects, classified projects. Uh, and during that time, you know, I was a, a 20 something year old young guy who uh, uh, did what I was told to do. I was gung ho. Uh, they gave me a job to do, gave me a mission uh, statement, uh, gave me an operations plan and I followed it. Uh, looking back at it, and I've said this before, uh, a lot of things I did, I'm not proud of, proud of it. And I've said this many times in the past. But the government basically forced me to do these things. And why did they do it? Why did they force me to do it? To cover up the truth. To cover right. up the truth. When I have to go to somebody who just saw a real real UFO, and I knew it was a real, uh, it wasn't one of ours, but I had to convince this person to keep their mouth shut and that it was an Air Force uh, secret project when all along I knew what it was. I mean, I did my job, uh, but you know, it, 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 and, and I did some things that, uh, uh, not, not anything, uh, uh, murderous or anything like that, but I've, I've done some operations with other agents to, um, really put the heavy hand on somebody who didn't want to listen to us, who wanted to go forth with information that, that could could have been classified, and and that's just uh, you know I think back on it and I and I'm some somewhat embarrassed by it, but again I did my job, and uh, that's what upsets me now. I, I, all these years later, is that now the government wants to continue to do the same thing they were doing before, and I'm one um, amongst many others within our group. There were counterintelligence officers that were doing the exact same thing that were forcing people in one way or the other. And we did have men in black. We had the 7602nd Air Intel Wing at Fort Belvoir, uh, the, the real men in black. And they went out and they were the bullies. They were the heavy handed people. Uh, they were posing as plumbers, electricians. They were breaking into people's houses and stealing pictures. And, and they, they were doing all that. That wasn't us, but we had a, there was a government entity that did that. And, and so, uh, it's an embarrassing and the government's been hiding behind secrecy for, you know, 70 or, or plus years. If you want to go back to 33 or 1917 or whenever. And I just think it's time that the, the government me needs to uh, come clean with the American people. That's yeah, my bad. And, it, and it's also one of those things, you know, when you're young and, you know, you're trained, you want to do your job, you get a mission and you just want to do that mission, man. And, and and you're doing it in your mind for all the right reasons. National security, if you know, th this has to be done. There's a cold war going on. There's a lot of reasons why, you, why you're doing this. It's not until later that you get, you know, perspective, you know, for the most part. I mean, look at all look at all the people that we sent over to to, to Iraq for Operation Iraqi Freedom, you know, Operation Enduring Freedom and all that. And, and so many of them have come back and been like, man, you know, we went there for nothing basically no reason we went there because somebody let something happen so that they could have a reason to do a b c and d and we went over there you know thinking oh yeah you know we're doing this for all the right reasons gung-ho go for it and years later they come back and they start to realize shit you know why why would why did we go over there all i have to say about that Vietnam. about that operation a rod is two words mission accomplished <laughs> I got two words for you, Darth Cheney. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, you know, another thing, another thing. Um, I, I, I was in a regular Air Force guy. I went to college, come back in. Um, I wanted to do something. Uh, you know, I wanted to get into something uh, secretive, uh, not just because my father and my uncle was on, in it already, but. And, and plus, th there's a form of brainwashing they do to us, just like you did to the United States Marines in training. You know, you go through uh, whatever, 13, 14 weeks of basic training. Uh, they drill this into you. Then you go to the School of Infantry. 
uh, or if you're in the army, you go through the AIT, whatever. And and we did that same as intelligence. We I went I spent 16 weeks at the uh, Air Force Academy at Four Star Building downtown Washington D.C. And then I went to the uh, 18 weeks of the intelligence operations course, which I think uh, personally, because I went through it, is one of the toughest courses you can go through because they make you do things. Uh, there are no win situations. They put you in absolutely no win situations and you got to try to find a way out of it. Uh, and you know, it, you know, you're not going to get out of it, but you, but you got to do everything right up to the point where you're either captured or you're, you're, uh, you're, you're the, the, the exercise is over with. Yeah. And they, 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 that's about every single day they put you through that stuff. So it's a brain, it's a form of brainwashing. And then when you get out and you're out in the field and they give you an assignment, now you're gung ho to go out and do it. Like a red, red just said, okay, I'm gonna go out and do this. Now, I've been spent all this training to do this. Now I'm going to go and do it. Yeah. Yeah. You, and you never, you never turn down a mission, man. Like, like, uh, cause so, I mean, look, look at some, uh, so many people that train, uh, especially in the special forces community, look at them, look at them in the nineties, they had no mission. You know, so when somebody came up and said, hey, I got a mission for you, you do not turn that down. You take it and you do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I was a combat controller. We didn't. It was after the Vietnam War. And we, didn't, we didn't have we didn't have any missions. Uh, we went to Africa once to rescue some uh, uh, supposedly uh, U, U.S. missionaries, but end up being French nuns. And, you know, we, we were gung ho. We never fired a shot. We never met any enemy, but we were ready. <laughs> we were ready everything but nothing ever happened yeah yeah absolutely absolutely uh next person with their hand up casey hey guys fascinating conversation french nuns pretty cool um so just talking about the uh you know the plans for disclosure the various plans and i was just thinking about uh something that i heard about david grush apparently he uh, what was it, 11 months ago or something you guys probably know the timeline better than me he you know went to the icig filled out everything whistleblower and then he had him testify to congress to some brand you know uh, members of congress some sort of uh highly classified i think it maybe it was even the gang of a right and he told them all of the stuff that he said in the hearing he could not say was, in public Senate did. It was the Senate Intelligence okay, Committee. So, Larry, why is it like a year later, <laughs> nothing happened? Like, what is up with that? And then why is it that apparently certain members of Congress know all this? Why has nothing happened? Casey, I can answer your question. All right. So the gang of A cannot talk to the Senate Intel A. They cannot share information. So Schumer or can't share information with Gillibrand. Uh, that's why Rubio, being the Gang of Eight member, has said either it's all true or it's nothing is true. The Gang of Eight gets a more specialized briefing. The, uh, the, the clearance level of this stuff is so classified, only the Gang of Eight members can hear about it, okay? So the way the Senate Intel Committee can hear about this is through Arrow, through Sean Kirkpatrick, because he's also privileged to hear about whistleblower testimony. He can't act on whistleblower testimony, but he's privileged to hear. So all Gillibrand or Rounds has to do, which they did, was go to Kirkpatrick and ask him, all right, spill the beans. Okay, okay. But my question is, once he divulges the names, locations, all that, they can't then go follow up on it? I You're mean, at, who, at, what point, at, what at what point do we body. get somewhere where someone's got the power to go knock on doors? Yeah. Like, like how many more hearings and disclosures? Well, let, I'd like to hear Rick's guess. answer on this one, if I can. Rick, what are your thoughts? Can yeah. I, we get with Rick's answer on this one? Rick, your thoughts? You're muted, Rick. Sorry about that. Uh, here's how it works. The information uh, that uh, Captain Grush provided uh, was in January of 2022. He testified in front of uh, he his deposition was taken. Uh, that's this is a timeline. Uh, the information that he was that he provided was first in an unclassified setting. He it was just among staffers. Then it went to a Senate committee, uh, which was classified. 
he provided them with information that he was allowed to give them. Now, every bit of information, if it's an SCI, a sensitive compartmented information in a special access program, that's owned by somebody. That's owned by the United States Air Force. It's owned by the Central Intelligence Agency. It's owned by DIA. In order for that to be disseminated, that they the, the person that has that access has to get permission from these agencies to disseminate to, to somebody else. So even though, the, the, as Swan said, the, 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 the group, uh, the eight, uh, I think there was only seven, but at that time, but they, 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 uh, they listened to it, but they couldn't do anything with it because the, the other agencies that owned that information wouldn't allow it to be disseminated outside that group or outside that skiff. And that's how it works within the government. What about the ICIG? Well, you know what? Let me give you an example of the DODIG. Uh, they, they, when I was in Washington, they, they called me and I took, a, I gave a deposition with them uh, a few weeks later, or some time period later. Uh, they called me back in, and this was in Roslyn, Virginia, at a secure facility, and they gave me a report, my report. They said, "Here's." Here's your report. This is your report that you generated when you was OSI in 1981. They laid it, they gave it to me and said, we want to talk about this report. Well, I look at the report and I look at the last page and I realize, yeah, it's me, it's my report. Uh, but it's redacted. And I said, uh, okay, well, what do you want to know? Well, we want to talk about this report. And I said, well, don't you have one that's not redacted so we can talk about it? The DOD this is what the DOD IG told me right there in front of me. The Air Force won't give us a clear copy. Oh. That's just an example of what the what the government agency that has the classification authority or the Office of Primary Responsibility, OPR, they call it, has but control the, over classified documents. Doesn't the ICIG, not the DOD IG, the ICIG, the Intelligence Committee Inspector General, overrule the Air Force? Uh, mm, it, depending on where the, who, who owns the information. Now, if, uh, if, the, uh, if, the, if the information is, is within a special access program uh, and the, the uh, intelligence community IG says, uh, we, want, we want that information, if it's within the intelligence community, yeah, he he could probably out outrule or overrule, but this is in the military. DoD is a separate separately. They're not within the intelligence community. The Department of Defense is separate from the Director of Intelligence, which is right. uh, the CIA, the DIA. Now the DIA is actually within the the DO, the DoD, but uh, it, it depends. It's a complicated uh, mess. Because if the information is owned by, say, Space Command, the intelligence community can't they can't disclose it, and so that's what's happening right now. Okay, so the, basically, the executive branch has to you know, put an executive order to declassify right. all this stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, you're, you're right, Swan. If if the executive branch, all all the President Biden had to do has to do, is issue an executive order releasing the information and i tell you what that executive order was written up in 2018 i mean in 2014 uh under when obama was president uh it was he it was written up by harry reed the senate uh, people within the senate when harry reed was still there to have obama do that to to, to, to de declassify this program disclosure and and release it and President Obama said, I can't do it. Now, somebody maybe got hold of Obama and said, you can't do it. I don't know. I don't know what what would happen. But uh, Harry yeah. Reid told, told us this uh, way back when, when we had a meeting out in Nevada, Nevada with him. He said President Obama won't even uh, sign the executive order. No, they had dirt on him for sure. Just like they, the, they got dirt on everybody. Just like the JFK <laughs> stuff. Everyone's like, yeah, 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 I'll do it. And then once they get in there, 
day one, somebody comes up to him and is like, hey, the JFK, you are not releasing this. Yeah. Oh, no, I think well, Obama, look at Obama it. Was, just, was just a pussy. Uh, swan. Oh, that's a swan. <laughs> that's a perfect swan remark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Hollywood, you have your hand up, my friend. Well, actually, you already got into a couple of the questions I had wrote down here about the Vietnam ship being fired down by their own missiles. I think that was a PT boat, wasn't it? I think. Uh, anyways, um, the other thing was uh, Roman shields from back in the ancient times and stuff. That uh, That's what uh, made the Romans go into Christianity and stuff was the shields that what's his name see during the battle. Well, he didn't see the, uh, he, he saw a shield or like a cross in the sky. Yeah. And that could yeah, have been something cross. to yep. the extent of the same thing. Kind of like the, yep. uh, the star of Bethlehem. Yeah. Yeah. But that had something to do with, uh, the Roman empire. Taking it was Constantine. Okay. Yeah. That's the one. I couldn't remember his name. Yep. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Also, the, the other headline I see said today, Burchett says uh, the UAP disclosure thing they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna tear up that amendment or something that NDAA. Yeah. Yeah. He mentioned something like he thought the DOD might might just uh, shut the whole thing down or something like that. Hey, hey to add some color to that Vietnam question, so. The ship that I think Rick was talking about was a destroyer, and it was the Hobart. I know, but we're like we're jumping back to other parts of the conversation. Good point, though. What was the name of it again? It was a destroyer. You were saying, Arod? Yeah, it was the it was the Hobart, and there was a PT boat involved too. That's what that's what Hollywood's referencing. It was two incidents that kind of happened around the same time or close well in close proximity of each other. Yeah, I think one happened the day after the other one. Uh, the PT boat was uh, engaged with two UFOs on. Uh, the river in Vietnam and yeah. stuff, and they shot at it, and all the bullets come back at them, and they shot the missiles, and they disappeared. Yeah. And the next day, they hit the Hobart. I guess was it's an Australian ship. I heard it was an Australian ship. I don't know. Yeah. All right, that's we'll all have, I had. We'll have to figure Thanks. that out. Thank you, Hollywood. I appreciate that. Uh, Rick, if I can, I've got a number of questions from the audience that have been backing up. If we could go ahead and hit these, if you be, if, if that would be good with you. Sure, absolutely, yeah. All right, first one coming in saying, Rick, I was on the search and rescue team at McGuire from 90 to 94. We got mobilized for an AC in upstate New York. We didn't go. They were. Uh, they said we weren't has qualified. They said it was a nuke on the ground. Do you know anything about this one? No, hazmat would be has, I mean, hazardous material team. You have to have a... If you, uh, but no, I don't know anything about that incident. Okay. Of 1990, 1984. No, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Appreciate that. Next one, Lily B brings up uh, Ross Colehart alluded to there being a pressing reason for disclosure. Rick, do you have any idea what might be pushing disclosure now besides the whistleblowers? Wow. Um, I can only guess. I, I speculate that, that something's going to happen. We know about there's there's so many people in the government and one particular senator uh, who's not uh, really in in this uh, disclosure process. Uh, somebody uh, um, told him a story and he went he traveled to another country to listen to us to this information. And he came back and uh, he approached one of our senior members of our group and uh, talked for a great deal of time about this supposed incident that's going to happen either in 2026 or 2027. It scared him. It frightens, it frightened him. So I, I think it has something to do with what we know, what the government already knows is, is projected to happen in either 2026 or 2027 uh, involving extraterrestrial contact. So I think that's, that's why... Uh, a lot of people are pushing for disclosure, even people within the government. Uh, uh, there's uh, I, I'm talking about the government in general, but there's people like I have a friend that works at DIA. I can't mention his name, but he works on his desk. He works in a, in a UAP desk. And uh, when 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 the 
the, this first came out, the first hearing came out a year and a half ago. Uh, these idiots that are up there uh, who didn't even, didn't even know what Roswell was. Uh, when they said, well, we don't know where the information is. Uh, my friend said, it's right behind me in these filing cabinets. Come, come ask me. I'll show you right here. Here they are right here. So that's just one person. He's for disclosure. He wants to open up his filing cabinets and show show people what what the government has. And there's a guy in the CIA, not Ramirez, John Ramirez, who's a great guy. But there's another guy that just recently retired within, I think, seven, eight months. Um, he appeared, but he didn't say anything. He appeared on a, on a, a talk show, didn't didn't say anything about UFOs. But one of our contacts, one of our group members knew him when they both were in the CIA. But that guy sat down and told our our, our group member uh, for about five hours what the CIA has plans, uh, what they know and, and, and what they have. And so uh, and he saw fourth disclosure and he's going to probably come out like John Ramirez has here in, in the very near future. And so. Uh, there's people within the working people are off are for disclosure. It's just the the entity, the government in general is it's is bucking it. Yeah. That I get makes off sense. No, 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 no. Your your feedback <laughs> is absolutely wonderful. Next uh let's see, next question coming in. Uh just curious, Rick, do you believe hundred percent of what David Grush has told the public? Oh, absolutely, because we 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 spoke to Gresh back in January of 2022, uh, and I and he was uh, and I didn't, but people in our group had a private conversation with him, and uh, there were so many things that were corroborated later, and then of course, based on what uh, Grush gave the Senate staffers and I mean the House staffers and and some of the House members that heard him speak a year, year and a half ago, uh, they went out, of course, investigated a lot of this stuff and found a lot of this stuff to be absolutely 100% true. And so, therefore, I believe him uh, 100%. Excellent. Thank, thank you okay, very much Larry. for that. Go ahead, Larry. Larry, you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Hey, Thomas, um, Larry has his hand up. Sorry, I'm running around taking care of stuff. My lower back is starting to be female dog at this point. And so I'm trying to get comfortable in dealing with cupcake at the same time. Larry, you have your hand up. Take it, my friend. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, Rick, I'd like to uh, go back to the um, question about Lou's group and their, their wish for how we should treat the government. And it's, it sounds like what you're saying is that they, they don't want to portray the government as evil throughout any of this would would that be a would that be a correct yeah i think that would be a, a correct uh, analysis of what yeah what, what they were what these but, guy, people were, were yeah. talking about yeah but does that imply rick that they would not admit to the things that they forced you to do for example are you are are, are we saying Let's not talk about that. Is that what Lou's group is saying? No, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't think they would ever uh, admit to anything uh, because they were doing it in the in the um, in realm of national security. Uh, just like when a soldier's on a battlefield and he has to engage the enemy and he shoots and kills people, uh, you know, they, that soldier. I've never been in that situation. I, I, I Rod might I might have been. Uh, so you 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 have this remorse, and I, as I do, some of the things I did. And of course, I never killed anybody. But uh, I think it's just that uh, the government would never ever admit to that. No, I don't think the ever, government would ever admit to making mistakes. Uh, and and if you look at the look at history, and when the government does make mistakes, they don't fully come out and and admit to it. They, they try the roundabout way uh, rather than going from uh, uh, they make a mistake at first base and yeah. come home. They go to second and third and then slowly walk to yeah. home before they ever admit anything. So, no, I don't I don't think they would ever. admit. Yeah. Now, from wrong. what I understand, Rick, 
if we look back in time and potentially the things that would go on, if potentially someone was taken out or murdered because of them trying to bring out disclosure, there's nothing that's going to expire the time to where those people, those agencies couldn't be potentially prosecuted for it. And that could maybe prevent them from wanting to bring the truth forward, maybe. Well, statute of limitations. There you go. Uh, fed, uh, federally, uh, murder is, uh, there's no statute of limitations on murder. And so, no, they, they could be prosecuted. Uh, and there has been cases. Uh, uh, I think the classic one was, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, he killed a, a two fellow uh, POWs in the Korean War. And he was prosecuted in, I think, in 1978 and 1979 and sentenced to, he was brought back on active duty and he was, he was sentenced to, I don't know how, how long, 20 years or, for, for, for that crime. So, yeah, I don't think there's any, any uh, statute of limitations. So they could. And, and you know what? And there in, are incidents. I, I hate to ever bring this up. Um, I really hesitate to bring up. But there are cases where the government probably uh, justified some sort of uh, dirty trick operation against somebody. Uh, Forrestal, the, 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 uh, the first uh, Secretary of Defense was, uh, you know, jumped out of a window at the Bethesda, the, the 10th, 10th floor, 12th floor. Oh, know. my God. 16th floor, Rick. 16th floor, yeah. bathroom window. The main window was much bigger. He accidentally in, a, a tripped and, and fell backwards out the window. Yeah. So, you know, yeah that, that sounds like so many of the Russian generals who accidentally fell out of their, or the oligarchs who fell out of their windows when they were on vacations. <laughs> he had some help. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he, and then there's, there's a, a lot of information that came out some years later. I tell you what, they, the, one of the, one of the people, or the two people, that really dug into that case was Stan Friedman and Bill Moore. They wrote uh, uh, a number of different papers. Bill Moore did when he had his uh, his business about that incident, and he dug up a lot of a lot of information about that that could 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 uh, be directed towards the, the CIA. But of course, uh, you know, all the most probably all those people are dead now. If anybody involved in it, but. But yeah, there have been cases, strange cases. The, I think another one is Pat Price, uh, the remote viewer, one of the best oh, yeah. remote viewers. Uh, how he died in Vegas. I, I mean, he was gonna he was gonna open up to certain people about what he knew and what he could do. Oh wow, then, I didn't know that. The next day, yeah, next day, uh, his wife. Uh, uh, he talked to the wife on the phone. And then he hung up, and the next morning they found him dead in the hotel so, room, uh, right? Yeah, in the hotel room, and yeah. uh, was a, was the a phone bug? Probably, I, I will guarantee. You, I could I could probably guarantee you that uh, people like that. Uh, although I wasn't on a, any uh, operation like that, but I knew of, of people within uh, my organization that would follow uh, people around like that, and bug their phones, oh, bug their houses, or or whatever. Yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, to protect, I just want to say, to Rick, so to I just got such a freaking wave of energy flowing through me, 100%. I will go on the record and say, based on what I just felt, he was murdered. Guaranteed. Yeah. In addition to what you're saying. Yeah. 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 When you get the waves Absolutely. of consciousness flowing through you and it comes to the point when you're hearing something, you're not quite sure what it is, and the answer comes as a resounding yes. I just have to pass that on. So yeah, that's a shame. I didn't know that, but, but the confirmation was even stronger than I ever imagined. So, you know, he was such an amazing person. He had such talent to be able to see things that normal humans shouldn't be able to see, but he mastered that leap through consciousness, that quantum reality that we're all connected to. Yeah. yeah. Rick, yeah. I just have a quick yeah. question. Oh uh, God, sorry. Sorry, John the line. Rick, uh, now these agency Will they be pardoned for the cover-up? Can it be pardoned for the crimes? Oh uh, yeah, the president can pardon anything, any anybody that is uh, that committed a federal crime or are accused of a federal crime. Uh, so yeah, I 
I think probably they, they would be. Uh, it would be covered up. I mean, I, I know of incidents. And again, I, I always hesitate to talk about some that I know about. Uh, but there's been cases where um, pe people within the intelligence community had to take out somebody. Now, if it's, if it's self-defense or something like that, uh, you know, you're, you're given uh, pretty much a free hand to do that if you're in a situation like an incident happened in Moscow uh, where uh, an undercover CIA operative is in a uh, is is dealing with an agent a female uh, Russian uh, person who's a double agent uh, thought she was working with CIA but she was also working for Russian to KGB this is back in the 80s and she told him I'm going to call the KGB and turn you in right now he didn't have diplomatic cover so if they caught they caught him he'd end up in a, uh, a gulag forever anyways he took her out and that within the intelligence uh, circle it's pretty well known this incident and he he had to take her out. he didn't want to but he had to protect himself and then he escaped and there's a whole another story after that now and something like that it's happened in a foreign country we're not going to prosecute him for it of course the russians would kill him if they ever found him but uh, you know, it's like that, their justification. But if you, if you, for instance, another, another incident that happened uh, some years ago was William Colby. He was former director of the Central Intelligence Agency. And he used to go out in a, uh, at the Potomac and, and, and uh, he had a, a canoe and he would ride his canoe up and down, uh, paddle his canoe up and down the shoreline from where he lived in the house. Uh, his house was right on the shore. And um, one morning he went out and it was a kayak, actually. He was riding his kayak. Uh, he never came back to the house. Uh, so his daughter went down looking for him and they didn't find him. They, Cause she reported it and eventually they found his body. Uh, he was an expert canoeer. Um, he had made some statements about this subject to a number, number of different people. Uh, at a dinner party a few weeks before, sometime before this. And then he ends up dead. Now he was drowned, but. Yeah, that was, was, that an that, accident? was that, that was definitely not an accident. Um, yeah. I've I, I read a lot about it. And basically that was uh, Colby. So he was CIA director during the Clinton era. And uh, he was yeah. kayaking in an area that he kayaked in all the time. He knew the currents. Yep. He knew the tides. He knew everything about that. So they kind of messed up when they did them. And, it, you know, when they did them there, because that just, that just, I mean, anything could happen. I mean, you could have a heart attack or something could happen like that. But it's just so, so unlikely. I, I really think that they did something to him. No, I agree. I agree. I did. I do too. And, and, yes. and on Forrestal, so Forrestal, Secretary of the Navy, real quick. Um, and he went over to Germany post World War II when World War II was finished. Uh, um, he was at the Potsdam conference also. But he went over there um, on an intelligence mission to check out the situation in German post post World War II Germany. Uh, we were occupying it and to oversee parts of Operation Paperclip and what all the Germans had, all the equipment over there. And assigned to him was a was a young Navy intelligence officer named John F. Kennedy. Um, who got that position through the good grace of his father, but not to mention he was also a war hero at that time. Um, and, uh, and then later on, Forrestal was supposedly uh, part of the MJ group. And um, the story is, is that he didn't want to go along with what was going on. He wanted to speak out against it. And so they committed him to Bethesda as a psychiatric case. And basically, they try to get him to recant, not not recant, but to change his mind about coming out. And he didn't. And so someone showed him the window. This Amazing is right how here. people can flip out of their the wrong way. There That's you the go. guy right there. Hey, yeah. Rick, I have a question for you. Um, back to the hearings. Okay, so what what is going on with uh, Carl now? I know he went through the DOPSA process. He's retired. So why can't he just come out and whistleblow like Rush? Okay, you know, some, somehow that was, uh, I couldn't hear you uh, muffled. So He was you, asking oh, about Carl Nell. Why couldn't Carl Nell come out and testify? 
or whistleblower. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I know. I don't know. I, is I he, heard about is he that. scared? I don't know. Is he, is he well, scared because he went through the DOPSA process and he's retired? So It sounds like maybe the DOD pulling strings behind the scenes, threatening we're going to pull your security clearances, we're going to do other things. There's a lot of stuff the DOD can do to prevent people and shake them to the core to not testify. Give him time. My understanding is he's an active reserve officer in the United States Army. Um, and the intelligence corps, um, as a there colonel, you go. and he wears he wears the light blue on his colonel epaulets and his service uniform. That's intelligence. He's got the in intelligence. He was strategic intelligence, and he's he's actually really interesting. If you look at his uniform and you know how to read the badges, he's got you know he he doesn't have any combat ribbons or anything like that or any combat awards. Um, but you're basically talking about a guy who uh, knows science is a program manager this is the guy who just screams to me as this guy is a man it's a first hand and, witness to the crash of yes. yeah yep yep he knows a lot one pull your security clearance Two, take your pension the standard threats that the dod does on a regular basis unfortunately yeah that's absolutely. what i mean that's yeah, why i don't understand lou uh lou's group's point where we need to do this slow because uh as lee gave me this analogy so maybe I like I like this. I'm going to mention it, but all go all the props goes to Lee. He said, "Grush, if we were on the runway, and there was a plane. Grush got that plane in the air, and now the DOD is trying to make that plane stay in the air instead of landing. I guess the lose group and others want to do a safe landing. But if the DOD is not allowing that, then when the fuel runs out, what's going to happen to the plane? It's going to come down and crash and yeah. burn, which is a runaway right. disclosure. Yeah. No. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's, Next. What, uh, that's, that's what we hope, but yeah, uh, we might be overinflating our power at this point. <laughs> absolutely. Next person with their hands up, Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. Hey. Uh, comment and then a question for Rick. Um, I think we have to remember that I, what would be driving the um, the gentle disclosure method um, is coming from these ex-military government people, and um, I believe it's because they don't want to hurt anybody. They don't want to be mean. You got to remember, all these people are keeping these secrets and stuff. I think they're doing a patriotic duty to the government, much like Rick said he did in the early years. Um, many of these people still believe that and may always believe that. But that doesn't mean that um, they should be completely taken down or you know punished and, and shit on like most of us think they should because they deserve that. Um, but if you've worked with these people, um, those agencies and those part of the government, you don't want to have that kind of black eye. You, you, you don't want to be that mean to them. So well, if they if ever come just, forward with stuff, they're not just going to be guaranteed immunity, but that will just be um, assumed that um, you're not going to be punished for anything that you've ever done. And now you tell us about stuff and we go forward from that. I agree. But if they're resisting disclosure as slow as it's going, then bullshit. They should lose their amnesty and get prosecuted. Yeah. Well, I agree that there's some medium way to do it or so, but um, and if they're not doing that, then um, it's like the bully. Eventually, you have to fight back. Yeah, you have question, to push back. My yeah. question for Rick was, um, uh, today I heard the governor of Peru mention she wants to start a task force and that she's got reports now from other regions of the same kind of activity and things happening. Um, minus maybe the jetpacks. Um, and then I thought you said that a few of your people were going down there to check that out. And uh, I was wondering if you had any update or knew anything about that governor's. Uh, although she did say all these things can't be explained, but that doesn't mean it's not minors or something to that effect. Yeah, uh, we do have two people down there uh, and they have. Uh, they haven't really given us a full report yet, but uh, they're down there. Uh, the, the last thing we heard, in fact, let me look at this email here because uh, give me uh, just a half a second. Uh, I was on the le link. Okay, they said that um, they spoke with uh, these two members of our group, spoke with the United States Embassy. The embassy is not, U.S. Embassy is not providing much information except to say 
that uh, they did send at the request of the Peruvian government to United States Marine, uh, they say special forces, uh, Marine guards, uh, he says in this email, to the scene to evaluate the situation and determine whether uh, we, United States government, could support the op any kind of operation there. And that the Marines came back and uh, shortly after that, doesn't say how long, uh, a U.S. Uh, military special forces team from Panama went down there to uh, patrol the area with the Peruvian uh, uh, military. And although they didn't see any uh, suspicious activities, they did see the remnants of what had occurred and the number of photographs and cell phone videos uh, that uh, uh, that they uh, uh, received. So, uh, and that was uh, the uh, 11th, August 11th. Uh, so yeah. uh, that was it's pretty recent. A week ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. don't yeah. forget, there's a lot, there's a big collaboration going on right now between the Space Force and Peru as well. So, We've got our hands down there. Well, that leads to my next things. question. That um, is it possible that we could be going in there and flushing out aliens that have somehow are in there that we found out about, or you know, maybe these are some of these skin peeler type of aliens or whatnot, but um, that we could be scaring them out. One and two, isn't this the perfect opportunity to use the latest, greatest secret weapons and other stuff when you're in the jungle? And you have all this life that you can kill and do other things to test your weapons and other stuff without any eyes or, um, you know, anybody seeing anything to mention anything. I would imagine those are the places where I would take the most secret weapons and the most I don't know, uh, damaging technology and play with it and uh, test it out in a real combat situation like well, these guys are doing. Well, um the first part of your your question uh, is that uh, we uh, what Thomas has said is the United States government has asked Peru to build a radar facility on a mountain in Peru, uh, for, and it was going to be manned by United States uh, uh, Space Force personnel, and that uh, I guess it's a joint effort because the, our government gave gave us money in the defense budget, and then Peru is going to, I don't know, film the, uh, pay for the, uh, uh, the building of it or whatever. Right, and so we're, and we're we sharing additional information with Peru about, sp it's about space safety for them, to, for us to go ahead and watch what's going on at the, at the Crafts in Orbit, and it sounds like Peru is a very strategic place for that to happen. Exactly, and there's there's other, the other reasons, I guess, but as far as using... Uh, weapons like that, I, I you know, I've never been in combat. I I, I refer to the, the question to A Rod. Uh, he might uh, have a, a, a more of an intelligent answer than I I could have. Yeah, I mean, there's something going on there. It's just a question of I I see it two ways. But I I mean, as far as the idea of, you know, we're taking our latest technology and sending some of our guys down there to scare up some locals i don't buy that um i mean ripping faces off that's i mean we do some shady shit but i doubt that we're out there doing that i really do um i i, I, don't, I don't think that's plausible so the idea that we would have some sort of forces that would go into a place where there were aliens um and kick them out um that's not a reasonable assumption of stuff we do or have done well i i, I don't know if we would go in there to kick them out <laughs> um but definitely we would send people down there to get eyes down there and figure out what's going on you if know and was, then come if, and then come up with a jetpack minor story you know as a, -Rod, a cover up that's possible hey rod have you heard about the mage incident if it was a real yeah. incident with real yeah. extraterrestrials it would be covered up like the mage incident where you would never even hear about it until four years after the event would happen. Yeah. It's, yeah. This thing is a complete hoax. But I wanted to mention something really interesting came out today. 
So that girl who screamed on the plane that said uh, oh. that M Mofo isn't real. Yeah. She actually, she's a disinformation agent. Someone found out that she actually works for DOD. She's not just well, a real estate the person. Mail server came from a DOD server. Yeah. I yeah. I don't know if that actually means she worked there, but it's pretty fishy. Yeah. It is. No, she wasn't acting. It's very clear she wasn't acting. Oh, she was she hyped was... up on some kind of meds to a degree or and or alcohol, and she was just freaked out. But here's the thing. She's free from prison, or she's free. It looks like there hasn't been any charges. Well, they didn't. Th she yeah, didn't go to prison. Rich. She didn't go to jail. She didn't commit a crime. She pulled a Karen, and she freaked out in the wrong way. And, and now, still, if you look at her now, how her hair that, looks, how her makeup looks, it looks like it's almost a completely different person. So yeah, she's she lost, trying to. Yeah, she lost a lot of weight since the incident. And then we saw her surface with that apology video. Um, she looks significantly different. Yeah, you know, she's going through. She's going through stuff. You can yeah. tell she's going through shit. Yeah, well, what well you know, what she could it could be personal. She be could it could be personal stuff. It could be stuff with her marriage. Could be stuff with her job. Who knows? Other than she was off her rocker and acting like a privileged Karen, trying to go ahead and control the situation and only let things go her way. So yeah, she. No, no. I mean, what would the DOD benefit from her? Nothing. Half-assed story that and has nothing. No proof to nothing. Nothing. Absolutely freaking nothing from that if i may my information from a distraction of the story of grunge oh maybe i don't think so she was just a yeah, whack job no. her story belongs in the inquirer more than anywhere michael suckloff your hand is up so what's weighing on my mind is motivation for murder we the the guys that are covering up have ridiculed people they've debunked them they've they've threatened them they've done all kinds of things to discredit them in any way they can but yet other people, they choose to murder. What is the motivation behind that? Is it, What is it that's so horrible that they don't want to get out? It, and the only reason I, the, what comes to mind is that it must be something that hasn't been said yet. I don't know. Rick, do you, what do you think the motivation for murder would be for a cover-up? And maybe even Mike well, can make on this. Well, I think uh, um, one of the things that I, I think, and I, I don't know this, I'm just, this is Rick Doty speculating. It's not me knowing anything in any kind of classified documents. But one of the things that uh, I listened to from senior intelligence yeah. officers over the years, even when I was on, is that the uh, we knew that the ETs were uh, thousands of years more advanced than us. And yeah. we... And we can't we can't do anything to them. There's some species, although I only we only knew five then. But there are probably more than that. These, these some of these species can 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 go from one one place to another without us ever having. It couldn't stop them from moving. Uh, they could manipulate uh, our weather or maybe our manipulate us as humans without us ever having any defense mechanisms against that. And I think the, 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 the scary part of this is that these ETs have a plan for Earth. I don't know what it is, but uh, but somebody within the government uh, or many people within the government knows what that plan is. Yeah. And uh, they're scared stiff yeah. because of that. And here's the thing, Rick. Well, here's the thing. Through the hitchhiker effect, I know and Rick probably knows, of someone who was killed because of the hitchhiker effect and someone being too close to the non-human intelligence, whether they like it or not. It's something that happens. And when you have someone who gets exposed to something and it's lethal, that wasn't an accident. It was intentional. And it was to send a message. Well, you know, Exactly. And a thing I don't like to talk about is, um, and I stay, try to stay clear of it, is I know incidents uh, back in the 70s and 80s whereby ETs were responsible for the death of humans. Right. And not just the death of humans, but the, uh, uh, the uh, taking of, of, of uh, infants or taking from 
so, uh, unborn babies from uh, pregnant humans and to do whatever, we don't know what they're going to do with them. I mean, that's just some of the ghastly things that I know about. I mean, I know because we investigated stuff. And so uh, these things aren't, these, these ETs are not all uh, benevolent. I mean, as, as some agree and some says that uh, they're hostile. Yeah. And when we cross their path, when a human being cross their path, uh, they'll kill us. Yeah. Or someone who's close to us because they want to send the message. I got to push back right. on that. No, but, uh, hey, this is the truth. These are true facts, Larry, whether we like it or not. It's oh, okay. sometimes you need I'll to have up, it. I'll no, sometimes up, you need to have your, 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 your medicine to go along with it. I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's yeah, affected maybe people. You hmm? Maybe you should take some medicine, Thomas. Some of my medicine. You need it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, hey I don't like it I don't like it either Larry I don't like it but when you get told the facts of what happened and who got oh, taken out fact? and how it happened you can't look fact? the yes it's fact 100% fact the person is dead D E A D dead a relative of a person who was close and involved with disclosure etc and the program they're why do you want uh, disclosure Thomas because no, want we because you know why? Evil, evil because aliens that are going to ruin the whole world. Is that no? They're not going to. No, no, way? they're not going to ruin the whole world, Larry. We deserve the truth. I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. I don't care if the government doesn't want us to have the truth. We deserve to know. And I'll take that quote and I'll go along with it because that came from Bob Bigelow, and I stand behind his words a hundred percent. We deserve to know good or bad. Enough of the lies, enough of the misinformation, enough of the rainbows and unicorns and glitter, gl glitter glue, glue. We need to know what the truth is. And if there are things out there and it's pushing people down and saying, oh, they're all good, they're all benevol benevolent, oh, we got to say it, they're all wonderful. No, there, there is good and there is bad and you can't turn your cheek from the truth sometimes that's my medicine i don't like it but that's where i am personally and i am willing to accept the truth wherever it's going to take any of us so one of the things that the public is becoming accustomed to they're having a hard time accepting there might be a non-human intelligence but now the new thing the new mount they're going to have to cross is there's not just one there's multiple and they're dog fighting up in the space according to these pilots who've seen them well, Larry, how many do you think are bad? And none at all? I haven't seen any evidence of it. You haven't seen any evidence of it either way. Well, so I'm still I, waiting for a motivation. I'm so hot bothered if you the haven't motivation seen any is noncompliance. Didn't you just call it fact, Tom? Well, yes, there are facts out there that I am aware of that are confidential facts that I cannot share, period, because I've given my word. And there are very good facts that people are dead because of this, because of someone was too close to it and someone in their family is paid the price and they're dead. It's, you know, people say, oh, yeah, I want to get close to this. I want to be abducted. That's the last thing anybody would ever want. You're muddying the issue, though, aren't you? I'm not muddying the talking, issue. Not at all. Aren't you talking about being too close to the tech? being like getting too close to the tech or are you saying that the et wherever there's good there's evil it's a yin and a yang you, uh -huh. you never get all white or all dark that's why in the bible you have the devil and you have god there's two sides of the coin larry, you can larry you can believe me or not but i know for a fact that et is well, responsible for killing human beings i think grush well, alluded to that in a number of what statements What's the context? That's, you know, I mean, I've heard this word, I've heard this statement. And I, but I, what I heard you just say, Rick, is that some of these beings, if you cross their path, they'll kill you. Well, well that's worse than humans, isn't it? I mean, no, humans are, oh, humans are, are that <laughs> way, if not worse. Yeah, yeah, we are too. Yeah, I agree with you, Larry. Yeah. Humans are that, are that way too. But the, no, the, the thing about it is, we, we, are, we, we, can, we can relate to humans. We're humans, and we can relate to humans on, on whatever reason 
that the human gets. Well, we're, but we we can't relate to, to to ETs. They're they're not us. They're not biologically like us. They don't come from Earth. They come from other planets. They think differently. They act differently. They have a different biological makeup than human beings. So, and what the agenda is. And what you're kind of saying, Rick, is they are what they are. It's not like they're good or they're evil. They're alien, and that's it. You cannot take human paradigms, human emotions, human thought cycles, and apply it to these things because they're alien. Well, let's 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 probe on that issue for a minute. Let's go back to the story that we were talking about earlier about the missiles that were shot and then returned back to the ship. Um, that's a quite human action, isn't it? Not at all. No, no, you can't take you can't take what they do and put human paradigms on it, Larry. That's the thing. You can't say, oh, look, they're acting humanistic. Oh, look, they've got emotions like us. Oh, look, they love us. Oh, look, they hate us. No, they are what they are. Like ants are ants, coyotes are coyotes, bears are bears, and humans are humans, which humans do a lot of very despis despicable and nasty things all the time. You know, there are some good people out there, but there's also a lot of really nasty things. And that's why I say, thank God we haven't figured this technology out because the people in control of it, those are the ones we have to worry about. Those are the ones who don't have the good intentions. Those are the ones who pushed the people out the windows and took people down because they were getting too close to spoiling their game. Yeah. Right. And Larry, and Larry, just one second. And Larry, and it, it, I'm not trying to get religious, but... It's in the Bible, you know, the God, uh, Jesus said, no one is good, only my father. Nobody's perfect. Nobody in his, no one is per perfect but God. So I just want to share that with you. Well, we see these oh. things fighting too, Larry. So you'd have to assume it's, it could be good versus bad in the fight, you know? It doesn't mean they're all good. Why would they be fighting with each other if they're all great? Well, somebody, somebody should give me a definition of what malevolence would be motivated by. What would be the motive for being malevolent towards but, us? But they're not advance? malevolent. That's a human trait. That's a human trait. They are what they are. Yeah, like if you like if you accidentally step on a, a mountain, a mound of ants, does that make us intentionally malevolent? You know? No, I, I I didn't mean to do it. I didn't see it. Oops. You know what I mean? No, no that's not what we're talking about, Rob. And we're talking about intentional malevolence. Well, well, I think you're trying to assign a value of emotion to these creatures. Maybe they don't feel malevolence, or some of them don't feel malevolence or benevolence like we do. Like like we like a lot of times we like to you know categorize things as black or white, but we're dealing with something here we don't have all the answers to. And we know for a fact that there are different species, um, different styles of craft. They're not all on the same page. I would like to think that most of them don't mean us harm, but I'm sure that there are some that do. Um, there's a lot of stories out there. Why, and, why would and, there and, be and, some that do? Yeah. What, what would be their motive? I think, well, well secrecy. Let's say they're here. Some yeah. of them are here, and they run into us, or they run across us, and, you know, they see us see them and they can't have that so they take us out you know never heard, um never heard of such a story well no because he's the, if you were dead then the story yeah. would never make it back to you <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean um so so so, so uh, larry, luck. go ahead larry you get you're 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 comparing humans to aliens you can't do that one of the first things that dr put off dr green and all these scientists uh, when they started at, uh, looking in and evaluating and examining and studying ATs, the first thing they said is, we have to throw all that away. we got to think of outside the box. We can't sit here and say, why did they do this? Oh, you know, How can you explain why this alien did that? You, we can't because we can't get inside their mind. We, we can't understand an extraterrestrial's thinking process, let alone why they did something. And, and so trying to analyze or rationalize what they did or what they didn't do is it's is just impossible for us to do I, I just don't know how you know that rick how do you know that we cannot uh understand their thinking because because we've we've dealt with them we've dealt with them at area 51 
We had him in captivity. We, yeah. We've 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 dealt we we've we've had face to face contact with him. At least some of them. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I was never briefed into the program, but I know there there's some of them that we had contact with. And we 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 had them in captivity, or I, I don't like to call them captivity, but we they were our guests, so to speak, because their <laughs> their craft crashed, as John Alexander would explain. What are we supposed right. to do with them when their craft crashed? We can't right. put them on a, one of ours and send them back to their planet. So we have to accommodate them. We have to build facilities for them because they don't breathe the same air as we do, or eat the same substance as we eat. They're all different biologically. So Facilities for them there, where it doesn't have Earth-like atmosphere, like underneath BAAS, big low aerospace. Big low space. Yeah. <laughs> so are you well, saying, you, are you saying, one of the ones that was, yeah. Are you saying, Rick, that so when the, you there's, there's a lot of information, scientific manuals and manuals of, 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 of information that we learned from them to make the, the statement that, we can't we can't understand them so I'll just leave it at that larry i got okay. let's change the subject because i yeah. just got an email in uh from uh uh well i got it from our group but it's regarding the guys that are down in peru and they just sent another uh i just just got it just not just now right off the press um and i'll just read it let's hear let me get the sound effects got. up here we go Br- breaking news for mick doty <laughs> Okay. Take it. Um, okay, this is information we gathered uh, from sources of information, Peruvian military. Now, these two that that went down there, they're both Spanish speaking, so they're they're fluent in Spanish. Members of the uh, Ikatu tribe claims that they suffered repeated attacks by aliens. They have called for assistance from the Peruvian military when this first started. Uh, the, the the military was not present present uh, in the area, so they had to conduct their own nightly patrols. And during these nightly patrols, these aliens uh, attacked the patrol and villagers. Verified villagers in a rural Peruvian district have claimed that they have come under attack by seven foot tall aliens. They have dubbed las, uh, the face peelers. Uh, and and it, it's in Spanish and English. Members of the Akatu tribe from the San Antonio native community have reported mysterious figures in dark colored hoods attacking the villagers who live in the rural district of Alto Nane, uh, northeast of Lima, Peru. On one such attack, a 15 year old girl had been taken to the hospital after she was drugged down in an embankment. We listened to a number of cell phone videos uh, that were taken at the scene by villagers. And in, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, contents, the voices reported, uh, and, and it's both in Spanish and English, monsters from the mountains. Uh, they this one is from outer space and now we're we're our group people are translating this is all in spanish and then they kept hearing cartura which is creatures uh and this is in the uh the cell phone video the voices in the cell phone videos and then uh, get the guns shoot them shoot them some community members said that they can't sleep because of what they fear Locals described the extraterrestrials as having large heads, yellowish eyes, and said the mysterious figures are immune to their hunting weapons. Now, the only weapons they have down there, the villagers, is shotguns with a uh, uh, double up buck. They don't. They don't have uh, uh, any any other rifles. They claim they have been attacked every night for the for nearly a month, but primarily since July 11th. Uh, a Peruvian news outlet quoted uh, one of the soldiers, the first to respond to the scene, as saying he had come face to face with one of these so-called aliens. He pulled his handgun, which is in the parentheses a nine millimeter, and pointed it at the face of this creature. He fired several rounds, but the creature never felt the bullets. 
In fact, the creatures walked away without being harmed. We have met almost face to face with many other creatures, the soldiers are saying. I have seen the whole body floating at a height of one meter, he said, suggesting the beings were hovering. The group now requested constant military presence from the authorities. However, it reported takes, it took 10 hours uh, for the authorities to respond. These creatures sometimes move, move farther east towards the Amazon, which, which, would, been, which would be in Brazil. Uh, we need support for our community. Uh, the children do not sleep and the mothers stay awake all night. They appear to be, these creatures appear to have armor on them. I shot one of them twice and he wasn't injured. He rose and disappeared. We're very frightened about what's happening in our community. And then they said that they, they went to the embassy to try to talk to the Marines that went, the two Marines that went out there and uh, they were denied access to the Marines. Um, they checked with the national police force and they said they sent the, the first group of uh, national policemen they sent out there were, were 54 of them, but they were lightly armed. And when they got there, they requested for Peruvian military. The army went out there and they were more heavily armed. Um, the ironic part of this is that most of the villagers talk about some type of a red button or red beam of light that comes out of the shoes of these aliens as they float away. Um, some villagers have likened the creatures to face peelers, uh, mythical creatures that harvest the organs of their victims. Uh, similar to, uh, they're similar to skinwalkers because they can change appearance. Uh, after the theory, oh, another theory is that the creatures are drones roaming the region linked to drug trafficking and gang violence however well this is the, one of the cartel members appeared on peruvian uh television that said we would have no reasons to be out there there's nothing grown out there that we would want to harvest so take that for what you yeah what you but didn't they also bring up stuff that there was an issue going on because of the gold miners and the illegal gold mining operations they were trying to get some of the villagers out of there because of the amount of wealth of gold silver and potentially rare rare, rare earth materials minerals i mean yeah, that, that comes next that's right down here it says uh when uh when the um let me go back a bit here um Okay, I'll jump down. Uh, the um, the Peruvian uh, National Police uh, went to the miners. Uh, there were miners. Uh, there, there's a there's a gold mine down there that was closed down. Uh, give a little background on it. And there's caretakers for it. There's people that are caretaking, watching. Uh, but the the mine is very deep, so you would have to have special equipment to get to them. That, but the, the police went out there and searched, and there were only four members of the uh, uh, caretaking team, and uh, they didn't even have weapons, and they don't have they didn't have any uh, costumes or anything like that 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 could could uh, be blamed for for these uh, these sightings by these by this villager, um, and then another one of the, the one of the one of the videos the clearest video we found was of a creature that looked just like the creature from the predator the first predator movie uh it looked exactly like this but it was a picture it wasn't a picture of a picture it was taken by a cell phone camera by a 29 year old man and we analyzed this the best we could and realized it wasn't a picture of a picture it was actually a picture taken uh based on the pixel uh count uh of 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 something that was in the air so it was hovering when they took this and that's um, 
and they said they coordinated with some other people and and then that's that's it that's the email so that's the update and that was just that was sent out um yeah the 18th, today's the 18th right okay. so that's up to date by our two guys down there but he also said in the beginning here there are numerous news outlets and investigative teams uh from the united states uh conducting the same type of uh research that we are so a lot of other people down there special equipment for a for a deep cave like a jet pack <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely uh, a rod your hand is up my friend i was gonna say rick um I i've been coming through trying to read testimonies and i haven't been able to find any online i've just been listening to basically every everything you just said was uh kind of already reported by some people um who actually did see some testimony like written testimony and was and, and people who spoke spanish and they were just relaying the information um exactly the same information that that, that we're reading there um but maybe we missed something is there anything there that talks about um testimony to sound you know uh you know because jet it like let's say let's say they were jetpacks well jetpacks are freaking loud um oh. even those even those boards that are drone like and use those propellers those are really loud too um did they did they mention anything about that no the only thing they mentioned was the um when they were listening to these cell phone or watching these cell phone videos and hearing the voices in the back there were a lot of screaming and yelling and and gruntle sounds and because there were so many people they couldn't uh, distinguish between the people that were taking these uh cell phone videos the, the the villagers and and you could hear these sounds these gurgle like a, a loud gurgling sound that later when they did interview uh one of the the little girl uh she said that that was the alien talking so yeah. that's the only thing we have we don't Here, have anything about here's one thing i have to bring up rick although we've heard from one other person Oh, they heard a loud electric noise, like light, giant electric transformer going off. Every single person, including myself, who has had encounters with these things, talk about the silence and the lack of sound when they're dealing with these non-human intelligence or they're dealing with craft or other things. That's my only thing that sometimes when you're hearing things of jetpacks and the noise that goes along with it, for me, that's pulling back the something of this earth versus something not of this earth any thoughts yeah uh, i agree that uh if this was in fact an extraterrestrial device uh, a flying method or or something like that they probably it would probably be silent si silent uh yeah. one of the, the the one of the mistakes people make when there's when they see a ufo uh that's making this horrible sound I can guarantee you that that's not an extraterrestrial. It's it's one of ours uh, because it's making it's making a sound. Uh, Stan Friedman and and Hal Putoff uh, wrote papers on this yeah. and and how they how they they can muffle their sound or their type of propulsion system doesn't doesn't have any sound. Yeah, that's that's why I asked the question. Sound is always a really yeah. important part uh, of this scenario, and you, got, you always have to ask that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was going to ask something else or say something else, but no, nah, I'll let the next person. Speak. Hey, Brian, your hand is up next. Rick, thank you, sir. Um, so is there anything else in this report? I mean, I'm not one way or the other on this issue, but if we could say hypothetically that it's NHI, is there anything else in this report that you can relate to? I, I know you talked about sound just now. But size, hovering, anything else, uh, what kind of struck me is they're in the mine area. You had your own mine incident. Is there anything else that, you know, let's say you were back in the day, would you go investigate this? Have you seen anything like this? What species do you think it is even? I mean, is this anything that, 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 that you would have gone and investigated back in the day? 
Well, if it happened in the United States, I'm and back in my time, I'm sure we would have sent OSI. I would have went or, or in our area, in my area in Southwest, or or OSI would have sent some teams to investigate it. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and I'm sure. Uh, and and these are our people who don't have any kind of special privileges. They have U.S. passports. They're they're both uh, intelligence officers, retired intelligence officers. Both of them spent a lot of time in South America. They're, they're Spanish. One's native speaking uh, Spanish. The other one just went to language school, and but he, he speaks fluently. Uh, and, and they just went down there to collect as much information overtly than, than as they can. Uh, so uh, there's probably a lot of behind the scenes information that uh, that's being kept from the public. They don't have news conferences like we do, and they don't have Freedom of Information Act like we do. Uh, it's just up to uh, getting hold of somebody that will talk. And they apparently, these two guys are good. They'll make, they'll make, they'll make contact and they'll get their own sources and they'll probably have to pay some money, but uh, they'll, 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 they'll get, they'll get the sources and, and they'll report back uh, as soon as they find uh, more information. So um, that, you know, it's about all the, re and this is just an email. They said, their report they'll uh they'll attach a, a report uh by uh, the 20th so yeah the full day yeah. i'm sure that so, there's going to be more information if we now. could go to the next I, person I, who has their hand up mike disclosure just, your hand is up just, yeah go ahead mike yeah rick i just wanted to say that um i agree with uh thomas it sounds to me like my bullshit detector is going off and there's no credible <laughs> evidence to support the claims that are going on in Peru. Um, I was just curious, based on your experience, what your take on it is. How do, how do you, what's your opinion of it, based on what you've heard? Well, <laughs> uh, well something happened down there. Um, and, and you gotta look back at the, uh, one of the things that uh, we, we talked about in the other email that I talked, they didn't have a lot of information is these people these villagers are poor people uh not well educated um and so uh, they're relying on their observational skills and not their brain necessarily what their thought patterns and things like that are uh in in an interrogation uh, school when when we go to interrogate people one of the things we key on is what's their intelligent quotient or what, how how intelligent are they? What can they tell us uh, that's not going to be an exaggeration of their minds? And these people wouldn't have that. They 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 probably have never seen the uh, the Predator movies. Uh, there's no movie theaters, and and in fact, there's some areas of this village that don't have any electricity. So uh, you can't say okay they they made this up. So there something. If you take all that into consideration, something happened down there. Now, whether it is some type of of a uh, uh, an operation, a military operation by who knows Brazil or Argentina or even us to scare people, or if it's an actual ET event, then you have to think of what what the hell would it ETs be down there? What are they after? So, Maybe uh, there's the, a mineral there they're after. Uh, Rick, the yeah, Peruvian go ahead. Times just put out an update on that thing saying there's these insectoid like aliens sucking off the blood of uh, humans. If Brian was interested, I can link you the article, Brian. Yeah, we can cover that one okay. later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, my, my assessment is that something happened on. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Something occurred, though, and these these villagers didn't make it up. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rick. Matt Ramon, your hand is up. How's, there, how's everybody doing? Um, I'm going to lighten the mood with it a little bit. It just screams like an episode of Scooby-Doo. It just <laughs> sounds like the guy's going to roll in there, Scooby-Doo's coming in, and the guy's going to unzip himself, and they're going to say, Zoinkies, it's the miners, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Scooby-Doo! Well, what what about the inf insects that suck the blood? I mean, there's reports of that going on now. There's mosquitoes everywhere. 
No, but these no, these are they look insect toys. Well, they're let's see some tall. let's see some good photographic pictures. Well, Everyone no these days has right cell phones. Now. That's the problem with this thing. There's no photos. Maybe Rick has heard about this recently. It's a recent update from the Peruvian Times saying there's nine foot like insect sucking blood. Oh, they're from so, the up from seven feet up to Linda nine Howell. feet now. Linda no, Howell's talked about those foot, insect yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're green. Yeah, they're, too. Those... They're, they're green and they supposedly have wings too. Well, uh, they, they sound oh, there like you go, uh, Thomas. Here's a good one example. Of the, one of the ETs that I knew about years ago. I think they were trantaloids. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that who were, she was talking about. Yeah, that that looked like uh, praying mantises, and uh, there were there's stories, uh, or there's reports. I should say stories, reports from people back in the '80s of of these these things, these creatures uh, sucking body fluids out of, of humans. Uh, that yeah, but well, there was something like that going on back in the time back in Brazil and and. Uh, Verheina, Brazil, to where there were beams Virginia. of lights that were coming in, and that was pulling yeah. blood out. Well, that was Virginia. Yeah. Well, same thing. V Virginia. Virginia, 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 whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. Absolutely. Bruce, yeah. Bruce, your hand is up. Yeah, well, um, this gets just so fascinating. Um, Rick, first question that's on top of my head Um are these aliens from these 80s, these five, are they still like the cool kids or are they, have they been outdone or have they aged out or we're still in contact with them or they still buzz around? Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, they are. But, uh, you know, I've been out since 88, so I don't know. I just knew what these were. Uh, and, I, and I've, uh, these, this, this has been around the internet a long time, but, you know, this is a, this is the, uh, list this is some of it's still redacted the second page is totally redacted but these are the uh and where, the five where does that, that document come about. from right there in yep. the top defense intelligence agency okay that's pretty official. we do okay. have a we do uh someone in the audience asked hey thomas put up a poll on this so let's go ahead and just show what we've got going on the poll right now we just asked this one pretty easy Peru aliens, disinformation, fact, or not enough info. So far, not enough info. Hey, Google, give me a timer for two minutes. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this set. Well, Lee, you have your hand up, my friend. Sure, two minutes, and we're starting now. Thank you. Um, I, Welcome I back, by the way. Back. It's been too long. Thank you. I, I kind of wanted to cover back to um, the, uh, the testimony of these Peruvians that were right there on the border of Peru and uh, in the Amazon in Brazil. Um, there's a specific um, language that they speak. It's called Amazonic Spanish. It's not, that's the English translation of it, but it's actually not a dialect of Spanish at all. It's recognized as its own language. Um, only about 3000 native speakers in Peru speak that language. And this is the, the language that is spoken specifically in these villages that they are talking about. Um, so having a Spanish translator come in there and be able to translate what they're saying is a farce because it is not a Spanish language. Um, it is a native language that is only it, roughly about 3,000 people speak to. So there's automatically a barrier right there with translation and understanding what they're talking about. Um, in the course of that, they would start to lean on commonalities between an English speaker that was trying to... Um, ascertain from them and for them to convey to so they would immediately go to pop culture and or present time things to start to talk about how it looked like this or it looked like that um and for anybody that says that they they haven't seen the predator there's several predator movies there are theaters in peru um media does exist they do have access to social media um they have heard or or that ha that those stories have been told about it even though Predator was never shot in Peru. It was shot in Mexico, um, but you know, as far as the cinematography, but there is a language barrier that exists there. So, I my first pause is, is with you know they brought in Spanish translators to talk to these people. That's BS. It's not a Spanish language. It's its own. It's not even a dialect of Spanish. It is its own language. So, 
I, I, there's a lot of flags that raise here about how they were even able to communicate effectively with the villagers um, to the point they would have had to have a native speaker there that spoke English fluently and this this uh, language fluently to be able to explain exactly what was being said. And I don't know if anybody's seen, was there a translator there that was speaking for these villagers when they were talking or were they just like, what was going on with the form of communication? I, I, I'm not saying that it's not real what they're saying. I don't really know if this is real or not, but there is a massive information barrier here between languages that needs to be recognized. Good point. Well, Lee. first of all, uh, we did, uh, we did, uh, the two guys that went down there, uh, we, they did their own uh, research on uh, that was, they know that some of the mountainous people uh, in North, uh, Northern Peru speaks a different dialect, but the, what you're talking about, uh, the villages are mostly right on the Brazilian Peruvian border. Uh, and then when you get deeper into the Amazon, those people speak that uh, mixed language. But uh, our guys that went down there are Spanish speakers and they had no problem speaking Spanish to these villagers. I, I don't I don't agree with what you're saying. I don't uh, uh, unless you've been down there. But uh, our guys re are reporting back. In fact, uh, I don't I don't have it here. But they have uh, recordings, which we're going to get here probably in a few days when they send their report, uh, recordings of, of speaking with the uh, Peruvian uh, military. See, most of their conversations were with the Peruvian military or the, uh, the, the national police force or the uh, villagers in uh, the, um, I can't remember whatever village, this other village here. It's in this uh, Iquitos, uh, which if you look, there's Spanish speakers there. You're talking about Hills people, and I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, I, we, we, we were in Brazil uh, a few years ago, and we went all the way on a, on a cruise ship for the end of the, the Amazon. And uh, we stayed there for, I think, for a day and a half or something. And when we got off to, to, of course, they had souvenir, tourist souvenirs. Uh, a lot of those people there didn't, didn't speak Spanish. I speak fairly good Spanish and they couldn't understand a word I said. And I thought they were Spanish, but then somebody told me, no, 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 they're, 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 they speak this other language. So um, I don't agree with you, uh, Liam, what you said about the villagers. Now they could be, they could speak both. They could speak both. Spanish because that they're in Peru and that's a requirement in school if they ever went to school and uh, they, they speak their uh, their dialect. Just like here in New Mexico, uh, you go out to the Indian reservations, uh, you hear them speak Navajo or if it's a Pueblo, uh, a Croatian, and, uh, but they also speak English. So, uh, you know, I, I trust uh, these two guys that went down there and we'll, we'll see what the, the recordings are when they get them. Absolutely. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I didn't mean to be contradictory. I was just saying that, that there obviously it, is a barrier there. That and Lee, to... also, also in the video, I heard some Spanish spoken, and and kind of like what Rick was saying. Um, I speak fluent Spanish, a bit of German, and uh, you can pick up bits and pieces. It, that video was kind of hard though because so many they were they were crazy. They were scared for their lives. You could tell they were talking over each other. Everything was going nuts, but you could pick up some words there. And yeah, that that northeastern part of Peru is pretty remote. But, you know, we've been there for like 500 years almost. The Spanish have been. Um, that's the official language of Peru. And, uh, you know, like like Rick was saying, you know, Indian you go to any reservation here. Yeah, they'll, they'll know English. They'll speak English. Um, the uh, the Catholics went really far, really deep into the jungles. Uh, spreading education um, and spreading language and Christianity and all that. Yeah, but also in that uh, particular part, you've got the Mennonites who have gone deep into the uh, jungle of Peru where they're traveling by two days yes. by boat 
uh, and then a day and a half by a motorcycle just to get where their settlements are. So there's a lot of different people who have gone in there and hopefully the Catholics haven't damaged their, their, their own religions too much and taken them away from what they actually deserve to have. Um, Chris, your hand is up. Yeah, I just have two questions for him. Um, hey, Rick. Um, Hi, Chris. Wasn't uh, the insect aliens, wasn't uh, President Reagan, I think it was President Reagan, briefed on those when he first became president about them being, because I've heard Linda talk about them uh, being the ones that we have to, you know, be worried about. Oh, and I had another question after that. <laughs> The mantis, yes, yes, in fact, uh, uh, Reagan was uh, briefed on an incident that happened. Uh, I didn't investigate it, somebody else did, but uh, the U.S. intelligence regarding the uh, uh, the creatures and they harmed uh, several people in this uh, this town. And uh, he was briefed and he got upset over the fact that these things could. <clears throat> travel around harm humans and and so he made a number of different statements regarding uh how we we need to defend ourselves against that but yeah you're right that that's the same one that reagan was reefed on okay and the other question is i read recently uh today actually that um congresswoman luna is i guess getting frustrated because McCarthy has not given them a date for September yet on what day they can do their, you know, the next hearing. And she's, I think she even threatened to like decrease the salary of some people at the Pentagon. Uh, well, well, yeah, yeah, I heard that, but she, she doesn't have any control of the Senate. The next hearings are going to be in the Senate. She's in the house of representatives and, uh, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer is going to announce as soon as they come back what the dates of the hearing. Uh, she's upset, uh, and I heard, I know what you're talking about. She's upset with uh, the DOD, uh, not necessarily McCarthy, because McCarthy doesn't have anything to do with the with the Senate. He's yeah. a uh, majority leader in the House, but um, and obviously she's just one person in the uh, House. She can't. <laughs> decrease anybody's salary it would have to be the entire no, no. uh house anyways i think that's what the, she was referring to but let me go back a minute there's a there's a news article on uh news net uh international it's a it's a international news service uh i think it's it actually it's in mexico city they have a they have the cell phone videos that you can look on the internet and and if you understand spanish because all in spanish and you can listen to this. I know Spanish. I can listen to this video of these people yelling and screaming, and every single person there is speaking Spanish. Now you can't hear everybody because everyone is is talking over people, but you can hear Monstero, the Montano, the monsters from the mountain. That's as clear as day. I mean, that's like uh, Spanish uh, 101, and and so. Uh, these people obviously are talking in Spanish and not in their native. Now, I don't know what village this is from, but uh, you can go on and listen if, if you understand Spanish, if you can differentiate against the dialect, which I don't know what that is, but I do speak uh, Spanish here and being native New Mexican here and, and also German. I went to language school for German. So, so just, just, I just want to throw that in. So go, go ahead. Somebody had a question. Absolutely. I have a question for Thomas. Wait, hold on one second. Thomas, that's a good idea that Rick just mentioned. Can you put that clip up on the show? We haven't gotten a video all night on the show. You think you could put that one up so we can maybe hear it? Which one? If, I, if someone could send it to me, that'd be the best way to go ahead and show it. I'm not set up to show videos from people in the back, Mike. Okay. I just, just a thought. Yeah. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, what I'll do, Thomas, is I'll... I'll email it to you, the leak, tomorrow, and sure. then maybe tomorrow night you can you can play it. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll okay. actually tomorrow's show is at 2 p.m. Pacific for any of us looking to join us tomorrow. Yeah, we'll go ahead and show it then. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Lord William, sir. Oh, hi. Um, no, to say you can't 
you can't argue with experience and that's what rick have experience and uh you know i believe him uh coming from a guy from the jungle from the amazon myself speaking um you know now these days everyone can speak spanish english you know it's it's now it's a melting pot over there you know it's not like you know like yeah there's certain certain places if you know in the interior it's very you know people speak different you know their own culture but not often you know it's more like 90 percent people out there know each, you know what i mean speak spanish and english so you know i agree with the audio on this one and coming from a guy from you know from, from a jungle so yeah Absolutely. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, thanks, Lord. Uh, also, remember, uh, in Brazil, it's Portuguese uh, that uh, uh, when when uh, uh, some of the reports, the reporters went in, ABC News went in to, to Amazon to speak to some people. And, of course, they had to have Portuguese uh, linguists with them. Oh, wow. Well, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Portuguese is, uh, you know, one of it's from brazil you know um but yeah uh but there's the amazon it's like it's a, you know so it's, it's connected to brazil colombia uh you know peru it's you know uh, guyana where, where that's where i'm from um so i you know i travel all those interior paraguay uruguay you know chile so i know what they're talking about and like i say you know they're speaking spanish i agree with you rick and there's different types of Spanish too. Um, I mean, you know, yes. you, you, Puerto Rico, the Spanish is a little different. I go to Cuba, I can listen to them really well. I go to Mexico. If I go to like the hillbilly areas in Mexico and listen to them speak Spanish, I might as well be listening to Russian. That's how yeah. freaking different it is. Oh, um, it's like going to listen to you, go and listen to people from the United Kingdom down on the Isle of Wight. You can't even yeah. understand them, or people yeah. up in Scotland. Yeah. Yeah, and and Erod uh, is, is, yeah. is, 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 is Puerto Rican, guys. He's like, you know, he's mixed in Puerto Rican. Yeah, Irish yeah. and Puerto Rican. The worst. The worst mix ever. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> gosh. No, the worst mix is German, is German uh, Sicilian. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Matt, your hand is <laughs> up. Yeah, I, I don't really want to change the topic or anything. So if anybody's uh, got more on this, uh, but yeah. there was something that i wanted to bring up if um i could whenever you guys are finished with it we topic. can yeah but we're running out of time my ribs are done and they've got my name all over it so brian your hand is up oh i was just gonna bring up yeah down here in arizona we have spanglish um and so that's a totally different dialect and and uh i also thought too uh if you were to uh, have a special military group i'd call it the face peelers and so I guess my question for Rick is uh, any other face peeling incidents aside from this one that's reported here that you ran into during your time? Thank you. No, I, I've never heard uh, any any incidents. I never investigated anything involving yeah. ETs, uh, involving face, uh, face peelers. Uh, most of uh, the incidents involving yeah taking of a an embryo or yeah uh, uh, infant or uh something uh, uh like that but no, 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 nothing to do with face peelers yeah well we'll talk sometime rick off the air about my uh out-of-body experience dealing with some of the mantis okay Ka civilization without a home world and they have a they have a use for humans and it's not what we would like but what you, what can you do on that la note last question of the night bruce bruce okay Rick, uh, government agency info. So when you're investigating stuff, I would imagine that there'd be times when you would find out or run into another government alphabet uh, outfit investigating or poking around or somehow you would find out about each other. What's the hierarchy? Who's, is it a pissing match or is there a real ranking of um, some of these alphabets as to... Uh, you know, if it's something secret or top secret or UFO or um, dimensional, whatever it is, the most secret stuff uh, is the CIA, like the top dog. And you have to bow if you're involved in something and they say, hey, we, you know, like cops or like government does to local cops. Is it like that? Well, first of all, the Central Intelligence Agency cannot operate within the United States. Uh when, during my time, they couldn't. Now, today, because of the Patriot Act, 
uh, the, the Central Intelligence Agency can be members of the terrorist task force. They can collect a terrorist related information from it within the United States. But back in my days, the CIA, we didn't we didn't operate uh, with them in the United States. Uh, the 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 uh, agency, the top dog was the FBI and their foreign foreign counterintelligence division. They were the top dog uh, in, in any kind of intelligence activity in the United States. But uh, it depended on what the situation was. To give you an example, was, uh, what, during the Paul Benowitz case, and everybody knows about Paul Benowitz, while we were at Paul Benowitz's house, um, there was a house across the street that was supposedly vacant. Uh, I saw this little red dot in the window, and I asked Paul about it. I said, I thought that house was vacant. He said, it is. Nobody's living over there. I said, oh, wow. And I, I myself and another OSI agent were at his house uh, during the doing some investigation. So we left and went over to this vacant house. Of course, we're federal agents, too, and we have armed uh, guns. And just as we got there, we had we had called beforehand to the Albuquerque Police Department and I had contacts down there. And so uh, they were going to send a patrol car over there. But uh, as we got to the to this house, these two uh, men came out of the bottom of the apartment uh, or, or the house towards uh, the driveway and I asked him, I identified myself I said what are you guys doing here and they said uh, we rented this house oh I said okay uh, I said then what are you doing with the camera filming he said well it's none of your business who are you and I again I identified myself well then they identified themselves as national security uh, agents uh, agents with the national security uh, agency so now there's a there's a turf battle there. Uh, what are you doing? Why are you investigating him, and so forth and so on? But uh, that's just an example of of a turf battle. But we we got that taken care of. But uh, in the United States, the FBI is the one that's uh, we when anytime we do any kind of investigations in the United States it, dealing with foreign counterintelligence or foreign counterespionage, we have to report to the FBI. Do you have to share the info with all these other agencies that get involved at that moment? Like those no, guys live no. across the street. Did you have to share? Did they have to share with you? Eventually, they shared everything with us. But we, we, uh, I elevated it to the next level of our super, my supervisor dealing with their supervisor. So we didn't do a uh, piss and match down there. We just let the, our bosses take care of it. But. Uh, no, we don't have to share, uh, especially if it's just, uh, sensitive compartment information or special access program, which the Paul Benelman's case was. Uh, we didn't. Sh we only shared it. We sent it to headquarters uh, in Washington D.C. And if they wanted another agency uh, to see something, or, or they would do it up there. We wouldn't do it at our level. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. On that note, what a great show, Rick. I appreciate you coming out here today. A lot of great questions, a lot of great information. I appreciate you breaking the news about your collaboration with your advanced working group and uh, Elizondo's and Mellon's group to see what they can do to move things forward in, uh, in the Senate in a way, because I know they've got great links in the House, but the Senate seems to be a, a weak point, so hopefully there can be a mesh to go ahead and try and uh, move disc disclosure forward for any of you who join late go back on team rewatch watch the start of the show it was truly amazing i really appreciate you coming out here today rick you're very welcome very welcome thomas absolutely on that note i want to go ahead and thank everybody for your wonderful oh my gosh i missed some super chats oh what's okay one from daryl zernick one thing, Rick, aside from financial, logistical, political reason, anything else behind canceling Space Command's move to Huntsville and staying in Colorado? That was all done by Biden, wasn't it? Yeah, that's a political move. I, I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have any knowledge of that. Yeah, that was a political move. And potentially they said if they moved, it would take down their combat readiness and everything else. So ah, who knows? It's just, it's just a Republican Democrat thing on that. Yeah, and we did have a survey. Let's go ahead and bring this up on it. And I want to go ahead and recap on this one before we go out. Asking our audience, what do they think? Peru aliens, is it disinformation, fact, or not enough info? Overwhelmingly, 65% of our audience said not enough info. And if I voted on that one, I'd go on that one as well. Some evidence, some yeah. pictures, some videos, something worth something more than a bunch of words would help. What do you think, Rick? 
Yeah, I agree. I, I, I would have voted there too. There's just, at this point uh, in time, there's just insufficient data to form a, a, a intelligent uh, assessment of what's going on down there. Yeah, absolutely. And if I could, I want to go ahead and thank everybody for your wonderful super chats today. I want to thank John, Daryl Zernick, Daryl Zernick again, Magellan, Brian Pemble, Daryl Zernick again, Shermanator Osborne. A lot of good questions from Daryl Zernick. Thank you, Daryl Zernick. Live long and prosper, my friend. Lord William again. Thank you very much, Lord William. Lily B. Tim Frick. And of course, starting off the Super Chats tonight was Fred Herbert. Uh, but wait a minute. But wait, there's more. <laughs> One just came in from Marina saying Rick comes on here and answers a lot of hard questions regardless. If you believe him or not, he's a trooper. Thanks, man. Seriously, I believe you. Thanks for doing so much, Rick. It wouldn't be the same uh, without you. So grateful and thankful for you. And also, they are thankful for a lot of the people we have in the chat still right now have been part of this broadcast talking so much up today. I want to go ahead and thank. Let me do this in order. Let me bring it up, and I'm going to cheat and just bring this up really quickly and easy. Oh, come on, screens. Let's get this around. The ribs are calling. Cupcake almost burned her face on the smoker. Let's go ahead and see who we have out there. Let's uh, jump into the back. And I want to thank. Uh, Renee Cruz, Two Head Six Six Six, Truth to All, The Mac Geek, Paul Demon, Shermanator, Osborne, Shelly Montgomery, Chris Rain Down Fire, Pete Liebel, OG Skywatch, Mister Catfish, Twenty One Hundred, Europe, 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 who's on his way back to work. Wow, that rhymed. I did good on that one. Let me shut this down here. Uh, let's go ahead and let me continue on. Uh, Mick Mick, uh, Metal Gaming, Marcus Mandel, Marina. Liliana, Chuna, Kelly Barot with her piercing blue eyes, who's here every night. Thank you for being here, Kelly. Kathy, Gene Splice, Firefly, Feigenschau87. I think we'll see you again not, not too far away tomorrow. Feigenschau, Evan B., Eddie Fong, Delta Echo, Daryl Zerna, Casey May, A-Rod, Amiga Rules, 50-ton, megaton diplomat, and, and Joanne. Also want to thank our uh, reporter on the street <laughs> for telling us about the travesty at the local golden corral on that note i also want to thank everyone in the back whether we get along or not we had a good time holy cow great conversation let's go ahead and see what did i do with the other song here we go there we go it's kind of quiet let's take it and leave it there the people in the back let's see who's back there a rod thanks for coming out tonight a rod uh thanks a lot thomas and i'm sure rick's tired of hearing it but thank you very much for coming on here oh yeah you're welcome. You're welcome. Brent W., thanks for coming out today, Brent. You're welcome. Thanks for doing it. Brian Pemble, thanks for being here today, Brian. Well, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Doughty. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Bruce, Bruce. You're very welcome. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for what you do, Thomas. Oh, absolutely. You better believe it. Also want to thank Dr. Tim Taylor. You dropped in probably for the conversation in the back, but thanks for coming out all the way from Taiwan, Tim. Absolutely. We also have, oh, Dr. Tim, your hand is up. You just showed up from Taiwan. What's up, Tim? <laughs> Maybe not. Also want to thank then Hollywood. Thanks for being here today, Hollywood. Good deal, man. Always like conversations here. It makes you think sometimes. Oh, it does. Absolutely. LM. Thanks for being here, LM. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Appreciate it. And as always, guys, consider the source of the material that you are receiving. Absolutely. Would you look at that? Uh, Larry Gern, thanks for being out. We got a little bit of heated today, but thanks for coming out today, Larry. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. You better believe it. Lord William from the Southern California. Thanks for coming in today, Lord William. Good work, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Matt Ramon from Ohio. Thanks for being here, Matt. Hey, thanks for having us all. And I just want to say, Thomas, thanks for your dedication to this show and everything that you do. I don't think you get told that enough, my friend. And uh, cheers to you, brother. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, coming from New York as well, our own Howard Stern, better known as Mike Disclosure. Hey, Mike, <laughs> thanks for coming hey. in today. Uh, you're welcome, Thomas. And I want to thank my good friend Rick for sharing all that valuable information with us tonight. Uh, Good job, you're Rick. welcome. Yeah. Well, you uh, you convinced me earlier on a telephone call to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> he's strong, Arminia. My goodness, 
He did. The, cat, the cat's out of the bag. From one cop to another. <laughs> Appreciate That's it. That's right. <laughs> also, primatologist, he popped in and have much to say, but we good to see him. Thank you. Thank oh. you, Rick. Thank you, Thomas. Absolutely. And that takes us back to Tracy Scott. Thanks for coming in, Tracy. Sorry the link was up. I didn't realize it. It's all right. Thomas, and thank you. And hope you're feeling a lot better with that. Thank you for coming in today, Tracy. And as what we usually say at the end, uh, actually, and that takes us back to Rick. Rick, once again, thank you very much for coming in today. Can't wait to uh, catch up with you after the show. Thank you again. I am so humbled and grateful for your uh, for your support and being part of this community. It wouldn't be the same without you. Well, thank you, Thomas. And thank you uh, for accommodating me and having this such a great show. I I just really enjoy being on your your podcast. Yeah, and thank uh, every thanks everybody else for the very very candid questions. I think we had a very uh, good good response, and 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 we kept it uh, uh, civil in most part tonight. But it was a great conversation. Oh, absolutely! And as we usually say at the end of every one of our broadcasts, eyes open, no fear, be safe, everyone. But go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely, we'll catch you on the flip side. Take everybody. See you tomorrow, two p.m. Pacific on. Disclosure tonight. Y'all take care now. Here, see you soon.